Hello everyone and welcome to Table Stories Just Fail, vale. Back to the Future. Bam, bam, bam. How, how does it go? Da, 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 da. <laughs> Second one. Da, da, da. Um, the oh, that was Jurassic Park. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Did you That's just start, you started the Jurassic Park theme he just did, now? He I did. heard that. Yeah. The same. Go. They're all the same. They all sound the same, and you know they do. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the stream, everybody. It's your boy coming at you live from Wisconsin, <laughs> Brad Wato, uh, as well as everybody else who is also <laughs> all in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. Wisconsin. The official yeah. Table Story HQ, Wisconsin. Into some cheese. Uh, I don't know. I, I fucking couldn't tell you where on the map of America Wisconsin is. I would just neither could anyone in America, so don't worry no about it. I have no idea where that is. Like, not even the beginnings of a clue. I'm all right at geography. I could. Tell I you. never want to know. Never tell me. The people who <laughs> live in Wisconsin could not point you to Wisconsin on the map. That's either, mostly so. true. Just lost true. They're on their own plane of existence. They're mm -hmm. not on the Wisconsin is not on the material plane. You heard it here first, confirmed. <laughs> uh, welcome back, everybody. How's your week's been, streamers? Had a great week, mm. Tuesday, Gray? Good. It was really good. It was actually stupid, stupid, stupid busy because I have like two jobs that I'm doing right now. And awesome. um, I've been playing enough Tarkov to only get about four hours of sleep a night. That's all you need. Yep. Do that for long enough and you'll give yourself like a weird sort of insomnia. Mm. And then... Delicious. And then you can reduce it and do what's that thing that Batman does where he only sleeps for 20 minutes a day? He just does yeah. like multiple 20 minutes. I'm not gonna be able to do that, Brad. It's called something. It's something polyphasic called... sleep. Oh, yeah, poly polyphasic sleep schedule. Yeah, I'm do not that. gonna be a polyphasic Think about all the Tarkov and work you could do. <laughs> <laughs> um somebody else who doesn't need sleep, Connor Cronus, where you been up to? Conan. Just Conan? A hell of a lot of Conan, yeah. Uh, it's it's addicting. R RP Conan, though. And mm. I found out a potion that uh, will enhance a certain feature. I saw that tweet. His voice. I Everybody it. saw that tweet. That and I was huge. It. That was... Uh, the, the moment I found out that that was a potion, like, the uh, bulb above my head was just, like, glowing like the sun. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. So. This is all I will do now. <laughs> I literally spent like four hours just farming the materials to make tons of those potions. What is What potion are we talking about? It's uh, called a potion of endowment. It makes his voice even boomier. Yeah. That's what it's well, in, I mean, it is kind Conan? of a side product. The, uh, in, the... in, in Conan? Magnum mm -hmm. Dung. Yeah, uh, well, as soon as you said endowment, that's like the character creator uh, slider, right? That makes you have uh, mm -hmm. massive parts. Mm -hmm. You can make it even larger. Is it unisex though? Does it does it like no, inflate no. boobs yeah. like balloons, or is no. it only uh, is it only like medieval question. Viagra? No, the developers said they have no plans for having the effect at work on female models, but maybe post-launch they may add something. It's okay. It'll be modded in. Fair, we're used to it. Female models are always an afterthought. For instance, in Tarkov, I'm a I'm a brutal looking Russian dude. I don't know if it's an afterthought so much as if they included something like that in the game. It's all people would do the entire time. Mm. Like you would run around and every woman would just be balloon boobs. Like, <laughs> Not me, like, but like yeah. actually, like actually floating around, like <laughs> from the gases contained. Like, it would just be silly. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, so does that work like a flamethrower's like gas tank? If you hit them, do they they pop and they just go like flying around the screen? Uh, that'd make it a lot easier for the rest of us. In which oh game God. are we talking? <laughs> oh, life. Because I'm pretty yeah, sure okay. I'm pretty sure in the Duke Nukem remake that was a thing. Mm. Ooh. That Duke Nukem remake looked pretty trash though, didn't it? I mean, it was. Yeah. When you have inflatable balloon boobs that pop when you shoot them, you, that's probably a not a very. <laughs> it was so good when I was younger, but now I'm like, uh, <laughs> uh, that was funny when I was 13. And <laughs> well, I, I feel like Duke Nukem when you were younger, or like when when we were all younger, rather, like back in the 90s, Duke Nukem didn't have to try very hard to be shocking or outrageous. Yeah. 
but nowadays they have to like because because back then video games were so tame in general that if you just had anything that was like r-rated in general it was just like <gasps> you know kind of shock value but now we just laugh that stuff off so oh my god you can piss in a toilet it's hysterical <laughs> yeah now you have to yeah yeah. Now you have to really go out of your way to make a game shopping, or you have to like brutally murder a child on screen or something to get the press to scream at the game or something like that. Talking of brutally murdering children on stream, how are you doing, J Bro Tao? How did I know? You did that Fuck. one, right? You uh, were one of the only ones left. I well, yeah, I have a cat in my lap, and uh, Detroit Become Human comes out this week, so. Yeah. What is that game? Because I've only seen like weird ads for it and I've never actually seen any gameplay. What the fuck it's, is it? About? There is no gameplay. <laughs> what is you, it it's like a narrative uh, game. You follow like three androids. I'm out. Um, and they're... I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> it's one is, one is like starting an android revolution. The other one is an android cop. And then the other one's like um, a maid for like an abusive household. Uh, and then you follow their... It's a David Cage uh -huh. game, man. Who's, who's, I can't wait till people geez. start screaming that the only Don't female character in that game is a maid. Who's one of those? <laughs> <laughs> and giant boobs and floats around. Well, like, she's, she's Give like her the potion. The dude. Yeah, the dude just Give her the potion. potion. Give her the it's potion. Weird. But can you put the toilet in it, Jay? That's all I need yeah, to know. Yeah, can you put the toilet? Know. I don't think Do so. androids have mm. bladders? I guess if you get the Maybe? upgraded models. Uh, Detroit Become Human is made by the same company that made Heavy Rain, right? Yeah, it's Heavy Rain. Nope. And, Did you ever uh, play Heavy Rain, Rain Brad? So. No, but I know what it is. Beyond Two okay, Souls so it's free. it's gonna be similar to that. Yeah, I guess. Uh, well, I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? What are you doing? What have you been doing, Tenchi? Uh, playing Chrono Trigger, actually. It's amazing. Oh yeah, I saw you playing it. I didn't come <clears> in. <throat> I just saw the, was the thumbnail while I was going to sleep last night. The Steam oh. version is actually worth picking up now. Um, yeah. It's got all the cutscenes and the DS stuff that I never played as a child because I played the yeah, original version. Is what makes me want to play it. Um, there's there's the graphics back, right? Yeah, you can switch it back to the non HD. All the HD is is it's like it's all the it's all what the pixel people were doing. Like this guy, I tried to do it a couple times, and he pretty much just smooth. It's a smoothing Snapchat filter, pretty much. Yeah. So it kind of blur. Uh, it smooths it. It's actually once you get over it. There you go. It's not so bad. But oh, I still recommend the original. <laughs> um, <Fair> also. <laughs> Just don't put the ASMR again, please. It, I, I just assumed one of you were masturbating. And it, was just, it was literally I didn't want to say anything, and it's like, no, it's an ASMR stream. I have a I have a confession to make. It's vigorously masturbating. I have a confession to make. It's not vigorous masturbation. Before the stream, just <laughs> took a potion of endowment and had. I have a confession to make. The whole accidentally hosted an ASMR stream thing actually happened while I was live. And so when I did it just now, it was definitely intentional to screw with you guys because my, <laughs> my viewers had the exact same reaction. They're like, oh, what is that awful noise? And I was like, this is actually hilarious for screwing that's with a, people. That's a good meme, yeah. Um, an hour, but then just leave that going while they filter in. Also, well, the I retro... Uh, your shower, so I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was awkward. The uh, retro Bloodstain game comes out tomorrow. I think it's free. So for those that don't know what Bloodstain is, it's uh, the new Castlevania, pretty much. That's not called okay. Castlevania. And they, someone, for whatever reason, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, we're releasing a retro version of the game, too, that you can play, like its own standalone. And it's going to be out tomorrow. So I cannot wait. Sick. Yeah. Sick, bruv. Fucking sick, bruv. So, bruv. Um, well, then, let's play some Brad kills us all. Yeah. You're already dead. I mean, <laughs> he's been trying to do that for a year now. Captain, your men are already dead. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so speaking of already dead, you guys in the uh, last episode was a, um, a sort of Raja flashback where we went back in time and Raja had a sort of dreamlike reverie memory of uh, being a young boy and going out on his first sand walk with um, uh, one of the sand walkers from his town, a fellow green sand walker. Um, and they took three clerics from Oat Roost out to a nearby shrine. And uh, we got to see young 
Raja. But things were happening then. Things were strange. Um, Raja kept having these odd interruptions to the reverie where he was hit by a sandstorm and he would have these visions of a skull-like um, being inside of this weird sandstorm. Um, and that is because the week before, moments before, sort of, um, you guys were in a town called Thin Dune prior to Raja's flashback. Um, you met with Mother Numera and the princess and her people, her ninjas. Um, but the town was engulfed in a giant sandstorm and uh, then destroyed by it. It was reduced to, to sand, to dust um, by this huge sandstorm. And all of you were dragged into that sandstorm as well and as far as you're able to tell were reduced to sand also um and we go back to the future ish back yes. to the future right this time are you sure do i need it do i need to put on the back to the future theme no no please don't. yeah i'm so stoked about this fact that i can Put audio yeah, through my mic uh, now. Don't put anything on because it will mute the VOD and then you'll ruin it for the rest of eternity for everyone. So <laughs> just, there's a reason I don't just play Final Fantasy music every week because I, I would. Mean, I play it on stream all the time and my stuff never gets muted. But yeah, hey, well, you know what? Maybe they just like me more. Probably, um, almost definitely in in my case. <laughs> um, well, actually, you're talking YouTube, huh? It's they have. I don't know. Maybe they have different algorithms on YouTube. I'm scared of the both. I'm scared of both. So just don't fucking do it or I kill your character. You hear me? <laughs> um, Mr. Raja, you find yourself somewhere between. You are, again. once again, we're not out of it yet. You're, you're not back yet, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you're not quite back to your physical form but you're also no longer lost in a dreamlike state. Um, you were sort of previously, and I think your character would be somewhat aware of this, you were sort of caught in the sands of Dust Vale itself. You were reduced to the land. You became one with the land um, and sort of lost your physical form and lost anything that comes along with that. Um, and only through this um, dream, this reverie, um, were you able to remember who you were, what your purpose was, and who Raja the Red was, and then regain yourself for the most part? Um, you do have a sort of physical form, um, though around you is just blackness, just, a, just nothing, just pure blackness. It's noticeably cold. You do have hands and arms and legs and you are able to see yourself even in the pure blackness and the sort of darkness, but it's more like a blackness in that you can see. It's just that there doesn't seem to be anything to see other than yourself right now. Um, your feet do appear to be standing on the ground. Um, there is like a sense of gravity. Um, though when you look down, you just see nothing but blackness also. There's no light but you do see your hands and your legs. Something else that you see ahead of you is a very ghastly figure. Um, you see the uh, a spectral, ghostly sort of image. Skin decayed, barely holding fast to his bones. This ragged clothing sort of falling away from his thin form. The, there is no color to this person. They're very sort of grayscale and spectral and ghostly, whereas you have the colors and the form that you seem to hold in life. This thing looks very sort of translucent. Um, uh, there's a cold pallor to this spectral figure. Um, his sort of bony hand reaches out towards you. His eyes plead for a moment. Um, and then you see these strings, which just appear and form around his wrist, around his neck and his legs. And he begins to be sort of puppeteered by an invisible puppet master above. Um, the figure you see in front of you is absolutely a sort of almost zombified version of your old um, village elder, Sagan Shara. Um, 
the person who spoke to you both in the reverie and out of the reverie and also somewhat pulled you from it to a degree with his voice as he spoke to him. Um, around him, a spectral sort of dust kicks up a sandstorm and uh, it's very localized to his phantasmal form. He begins to rage unintelligibly, sort of snapping his jaws. Originally, he sort of looks to you and reaches out to you and then these strings grab him and he starts to snap his jaws kind of like a crazed um, spirit and then the sands explode around him and you feel a gust of wind hit you and I would like you please to roll me some initiative oh boy thank you very much you actually put Sagan Shah Wraith <laughs> yeah I need a name for this creature I'm out. <laughs> uh, all right. Initiatives. Well, it's not Sagan Shara. But it is Sagan Shara. But it's not Sagan Shara. But it is Sagan Shara. So. Well, 13 it is. 13. Sorry, rest of the players. Please hold hey. fast. This is, this is cool. Um, Sagan Shah Wraith, who I will just refer to as Sagan Shara, uh, is, has rolled a 14, which is incredible. Um, which is so sucktastic, because now I lose my <laughs> advantage on the first roll. <laughs> the, uh, the form just explodes and this wave of sand hits you. Um, again, it's very spectral, this sand, but it hits you in the same way as you would expect a huge wave of actual physical sand to hit you. You feel the wind, you feel the chill, um, and the sand kind of uh, covers <coughs> you for a moment. And then you have this form of uh, Sagan Shara surrounded by sands, just wild and crazy. And you have seen this before. We have all seen it a couple of times. This is ex almost exactly the same thing that uh, Carlias encountered when you were being carried by it. You also uh, met this sort of thing in the real world when you and Walter were heading back towards Shallow Scar. Um, again, he holds a, a lantern in one hand, um, though he looks like a crazy walking dead zombie really at this point with this wild sandstorm kicking up around him. Uh, brrr, let's see here. Can you please give me a dexterity saving throw? <laughs> Why can I not roll today? Oof, that is a fail. Um, bam. You take 14 slashing damage from that initial burst of just, um, sand. Oh, when we, uh, when we were disintegrated and regained our corporeal forms, did we refill our health and spell slots or nah? You, because... You have all of your health and spell slots back. Okay. Um, everybody else at this point doesn't exist. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Let me... Because I was like, this is going to be a very short fight if we don't get to no, heal you, from the... <laughs> you're, you're back. You're back and you're at full everything. You okay. have reformed yourself in this astral plane area. Um, and uh, yeah, this huge vortex is now spiraling around him. Um, and as it hits you, it deals this initial damage to you. And that is uh, the end of Sagan Shara's turn. What would you like to do? Okay, I will. Oh, what what type of damage is that he just hit me with? Is that Slash. um slashing? Okay. I will cast uh, protection from evil uh, on myself as my action, and then my bonus action, I will target it with Slayer's Eye. Start studying this thing. Uh, so you get resistances and immunities, yeah. Correct. Including condition immunities? Uh, let me, let me double check. That's weird. My description seems to have been deleted off of uh, Roll20, so let me just pull it up online real quick. It is... Learn vulnerability, immunity, and resistances, and any special effects such as fire stopping regeneration. Okay. Um, so, in its current form, it has 
Um, damage resistances, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing from non-magical weapons, damage immunities, necrotic and poison, condition immunities, charmed, exhaustion, grappled, frightened, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, restrained, and unconscious. Um, it also has a vulnerability to water. Mm, that's about it. Huh. If only I had water of some sort. <laughs> okay, that's... Uh... Arden. Let's see. I will move. Hey, you can't you can't hope for something you've never had, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that is the end of my turn. Okay. The um, accursed wraith form of Sagan Shara uh, again screeches almost silently inside of this wind which is kicking up around it. Um, it shines this torch around, almost blindly looking about at first before it fixes onto where you are. Uh, let's see here, what has it got? Um, I would say it definitely runs towards you and it, it moves with like a blistering speed, um, which is something that you probably wouldn't expect from Sagan Shah himself, but this thing just moves. Its legs kind of disappear and the sand pushes it forward um, before it slams into you. Um, brah, what is your AC? Uh, it is 19. That is an 18 and a 23. And he attacks with disadvantage due to protection from evil. Oh, okay. So, an um, 18. And, very good. Oof, a 15. Um, so this thing just launches towards you. And uh, again, you see it coming and you're able to move out of the way. And this thing very much acts like a big, zombie inside of a storm and although the sands are whipping at you it's not hitting you as hard and you're able to dodge out of the way as it runs past you it turns around and attempts to do the same thing again and you probably do a raja-esque flip one way um as this thing is kind of just wildly moving around the sands kicking up about you it's just trying to slam into you um it is also gonna see if it can recharge its bullshit move and it cannot um Well, is the end of its turn? What would you like All to right. do? And now we commence with the slapping, and I will attack it twice. Yes. Oh, wait. I will first use my bonus action for... Uh, what is it? Actually, no. I'm not going to do that. I'll just attack it. Right. Uh, boom. There's one. So far, I've rolled eight, eight, three, and two. This is a great day for me. And then well, you... attempt number... Oh, my God! <laughs> you haven't had a body for a long time, so maybe you're uh, you're feeling a little odd. Maybe you've got, like, a, like a summoning... I just, <laughs> I just rolled, what? Three, three, two, two. Okay, um, yeah, that is, I guess, the end of my turn. Yeah, we'll say you have a summoning sickness here. Um... You now know how Tumdra, uh, Tumdrin felt. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, this thing probably, if we imagine this thing like runs at you and you dodge out of the way, maybe you bring the Tolwa around to attack it then, but like you hit nothing but a wall of sand before you can match uh, or figure out where inside this sandstorm the actual monstrosity is. Um, again, it turns at you, runs towards you, you dodge, bring in the, the Tolwa low, this thing's body is strange. Some parts of it move and shift inside of its own um, sandstorm and you whoosh, swing and a miss. Um, the creature itself is going to roll two of that number, which is one hit and then, and then a critical failure. Um, so uh, one hit. This thing uh, spins on you as you just bring the Tolwa low. You feel this wall of sand as the uh, the creature, not just itself slams towards you, but the entire wall of sand hits you. And uh, let's see here. That was with the disadvantaged roll, correct? Yes, both disadvantage. Uh, it rolled a two and a one on its second roll. <laughs> uh, mm. Feels bad, man. So you're going to take uh, 12... Uh, bludgeoning damage from that one. And then on the second one, 
Uh, it's going to slam straight into your Tolwa. Um, and I'm just going to give it its own damage attack here instead of your Tolwa. But it will take um, 12 damage itself. So although it slams into you, what it does is it slams into your Tolwa and you feel it bite into the sort of more physical form of Sagan Shara inside of the Sandstorm. Um, oh yeah, I'm writing it down. So actual maths. Uh, yeah, that's for the that's for the one. It takes some damage, and then it's your turn. Okay, Uh With my body becoming a corporeal again, do I have my full inventory back? Uh, yeah, you have everything. Okay. When you, when you uh, when you listed off his uh, vulnerabilities and resistances, was there a weakness to radiant or not? Uh, no. Okay. I didn't have any vulnerability. Uh, I will just go ahead and swing again then, and hopefully have better luck this time. It's more like it. There Incredibly, we go. Incredibly, that is two hits. Oh, okay. Uh, sucks even more about those two elevens. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> in that case, uh, that is 14 damage and then... Give me all of it. Give me okay, 14, 10. And tell me how it looks. One, plus two, plus two, five, 15. Uh, 29. 29. Um... Yeah, I feel like you probably do like a crazy set of swooshes and flips as you start to regain your um, physical form again, jumping about this thing, leaving a cut here, a cut there. For the most part, when you do damage to the, the actual physical ghastly ghoul form of this thing, you're feeling it bite in. I assume you're using the uh, the black tollwar. Yes, and yeah, this is with the magic tollwar. So as you're cutting it open, it's opening these wounds in this thing like it would do to a normal human opening up something. But there's no blood that falls out. It's just sand that comes out. But you do see this thing kind of deflating. It does seem to take the damage from this and it is reducing its um, speed. And uh, it, it doesn't cry out in pain, but you can tell that you're causing it uh, damage for sure. Um, that brings us to that. Um, the thing. Oof. Um, while you're cutting around this thing, it's getting frustrated, moving, trying to track you. It brings the the uh, lantern up, following you left to right. Um, the frustration building inside of it, it becomes almost poltergeist-like, and it lets out another sort of almost silent screech. The winds pick up about you again. Give me another dexterity saving throw, please. Uh, it is 10, and then thanks to... Wait. Sir, how do I have... I, did I roll another two? I did roll another two. Uh, but thanks to Slayer's Eye, I also get a 1d6 on top of that. So maybe if I get lucky here. 13. Not quite enough, I'm afraid. Unable to avoid it, there's just another wall of sand explodes out from this thing, including the wall around you. You feel it pick up um, and intensify, and it just starts to slash and cut at your body. It's going to deal 13 slashing damage. Look at all those ones. Yikes. <laughs> um, yeah, the sands just pick up. And again, it's like being cut by a thousand tiny little um, razored petals as this uh, sand blasts and, and rips through you, dealing 13 slash. Uh, and then that brings us to you again. Uh, I am... I am contemplating taking off protection from evil because it just seems to hit me anyway regardless <laughs> uh but we'll have to do that later i'm just gonna swing at it again uh with a regular swing and a i'm gonna do the great weapon strike for my second roll and hope i get lucky uh minus five accuracy plus 10 damage okay that's two hits okay so that is That is. Well, let me make sure I'm adding it up right. Mm 
So that is 42 damage. Easily enough to defeat this thing. You um, bring the Tolwa back and you slice once and then with a, a thrust forward, you feel the Tolwa just crunch into something inside of Sagan Shara's midsection. The strings that were kind of partially visible controlling him just shatter like glass and they rain down. The sands immediately drop out and the, the form, the old man form of Sagan Shara is thrust backwards and he falls, hits the ground, rolls over a few times and then looks up to you. Um, now his face still remains kind of um, ghastly and ghoulish, but he um, he doesn't look as crazy. He doesn't look enraged. He doesn't look insane. He doesn't look like he isn't sort of in control. Um, immediately he uh, looks down at his body and it's still cut up and beaten up, um, but the wounds begin to close as if they're filling with sand, like you might see if you dig a hole in dry sand. Um, but as they do so, he looks up to you and holds up a hand and says, Raja, it's me. <laughs> yeah, he just... Raja kind of stops for a second after that last swing, but he's still very uh, cautious, I guess, because he's clearly a ghost so, and just says what happened to you he uh begins to try and move but you can see he, he he resembles the old man that he once was and he doesn't he's not able to really like push himself up off the ground and he just rests himself on an elbow he says i made a deal Raja, long ago when you were a boy the mayor came to me, Vizrael Sensrix, mayor of our glorious capital city. He spoke of bringing in the settlements like South Grove and others, Yellow Rock, Zephari, offering them stations on the train. Trade, a chance to progress, to no longer live off the lands, but to prosper. He coughs up and just sand falls from his mouth like blood. Though the wounds are beginning to close again, he says. It was not our way. I had studied the ways of the lands. I loved the land, but our village was dying. It was hard to admit, but it was true. Smaller it grew with every decade. And I knew I should accept the mayor's offer, but something was wrong. And I should have seen then, but I was blind. I guess at this point, Raja's like cleaning sand off of the, off of the tolwar and putting it away and just says, And? What happened? Are you even still alive? No. I am surprised. Even to see you in this sort of half-life, I thought you, I thought you dead. Arasha <laughs> just rolls up his sleeve and has like the huge tattoo that Kalambor put on there and says, it's been a very interesting road for me. The, uh, the old man kind of looks at the form and he for a moment looks confused. And as he goes to open his mouth again, sand falls from it and his eyes kind of begin to gloss over and you see this spectral string appear not, around uh, my arm. As that's happening, I just want to try and interrupt it and cut, like, not his arm, but above it, near where the strings would be. Give me an attack roll. Uh... You bring the uh, tolwar in and you slice at the string and you very easily cut through it. Again, it shatters like um, like kind of glass and then it sprinkles down and the old man's face while rage begins to fill his face again he says no there is nothing you can do to stop it you must free me it is the only way and how do I do that What what is even controlling you he is Solomon and then again the string falls and grabs one of his wrists you see it 
fall again around one of his feet and this rage begins to fill in his face. <sighs> you see in your own hand, there's a strange light that begins to build, like a fire that sits around your hand and then again around the other one as you grip the tolwa. While again, these strings fall and uh, grip Sagan Shara's hands and he tries to speak, but again, just ah, I'll, ah. I'll, I'll try to delay it one more time and swing at it again. Give me a attack roll. Twenty-two. Yeah, you hit one of the strings and it shatters, but then immediately another one falls, another one falls, another one. Um, the crazed look on Sagan Shara's face. How do I stop it? Shift and change. He looks insane now. Again, he starts to snap. More importantly, the winds pick up around you again, and the sand lifts up. There's uh, a moment where um, these sands are picking up and you're at this point probably aware that this thing is going to hit you with like a sand slash type move. Mm -hmm. um, but around the back of where Sagan Shara is currently laying, ghostly forms of your comrades appear. Walter, Lash, Carlias, and Arden. With both of your hands now aflame, you're able to bring two more of your comrades forth to help you with this next section of combat. Um, whoever you pick is up to you, but that's what this flame is for. Oh, crap. I have to pick party members? Yes. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Final Fantasy, the campaign. <laughs> Welcome to Final Fantasy. Uh, all of them, really. Yeah. Um, I guess uh I feel Arden's on the sideline just like don't pick me. I'm I'm busy. Uh, Arden is not there. There is <laughs> a ghost of <laughs> Arden which can be filled with the flame of life. <laughs> At the moment there is no Arden. Choose alphabetically. <laughs> Choose alphabetically. Um Okay, I guess it's kind of makes it makes sense that the first person he just sees Walter and reflexively like does this kind of this come here motion with mm. Walter and then I feel like Arden would make the most sense because he's a cleric and all that but realistically decisions man why you make this so difficult um but if you don't pick soon, you're just gonna. Okay, he, he he's he's gonna he's gonna pull Carlias. Cool. The two flames leave your hands. They go straight forward towards the forms of Walter and Carlias, and you see the flames fill them. Um, and then as it as the flames kind of fill these sort of ghostly forms, they become corporeal like you are. Their color fills them. Their skin, um, all of their equipment and bits and these physical forms appear. Uh, who did you go with first? Walter. Um, <clears throat> you will have been through a similar thing to um, Raja recently in that he had a flashback, something that helped him ground himself and pull him back to what is as close to the material plane as we are right now. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think Walter saw? What do you think he went through? Um, Walter to ground himself and bring yeah, him back. It was probably his most traumatic moment uh, in Dead Rise where him and um, three couple other people um, he was possessed uh, and they went on a essentially a murdering spree um, mm -hmm. and that, that would have been replayed countlessly time and time over and over again in his head so it's probably the most defining moment because he that is the one thing that he holds against himself that was the reason why he was uh, thrown out of dead rise I think you probably lived through that again yeah um, in a similar way to Raja did though you almost definitely had these intrusive visions um, of being hit by a sandstorm um, at some point during it in the same way that um, Raja heard the voice of Sagan Shara calling him back um, 
you most likely hear the voice of of Raja or somebody from the party. Um, mm. And you find yourself here now in the same way that Raja did. For a moment, you're engulfed in your own reverie um, by the sands. And then you are brought forth to this sort of area where before you stands Raja, around you is nothing but blackness. And then there's this, the beginnings of a, a sandstorm at the central area. And inside of it, there's this creature, this um, ghoulish wraith type thing, which seems to be wild and snapping. And as the, the sands pick up around it, um, it becomes more crazed. These weird strings that seem to be puppeteering it. Um, Carlias, same question, really. What, what do you think Carlias would have seen in his own reverie? That would have helped him to ground himself and find his purpose, bring him back. Would have been the moment when uh, he went to the crime scene of Kenneth's murder. Of Kenneth the three, of the three grandkids. Kenneth murdering three children, and then you taking the bounty after seeing that scene. Um, probably one of the things that happened almost immediately prior to this campaign. Um, and then discovering, finding Kenneth and following him, tracking him, trying to work out what his motives were, and then ultimately putting him down. Um, I think, again, during that reverie at some point, you would have been continually um, hit by these weird sandstorms that knock you almost out of it. And anybody that was in the reverie would have noticed it happened to you but it would also have triggered something in you that made you feel like it wasn't quite real and probably aspects of the memories were wrong um, and not quite true eventually you would have been hit by one of these sandstorms again and you'd probably hear the voice of Walter or Raja or somebody drawing you back to here this place and you see now Walter kind of doing like a thing where he comes to and then you see Raja who looks perfectly um, prepared. Walter maybe looks a little confused. Raja's maybe got a few cuts and bruises on him right now, but more importantly, there's this thing inside of a sandstorm in front of where you guys are. Will you two please roll me an initiative? We'll keep the same initiative order um, because you're being brought straight in as this thing fucking wakes up in front of you and uh, the sandstorm begins to pick up once again. Sorry, Tuesday. Sorry, Tenchi. I'm it's fine. Still in I, I legitimately think that Arden just is doing his own thing, even if he is incorporeal and only in essence. <laughs> like, as a, like, from player meta standpoint, I wanted the cleric, but gotta RP it properly. Raja doesn't depend on Arden for anything, and he would rather not put Lash in harm's way, so he would grab the other two by default. Well, I thought you were going to go, Eddie would rather not depend on Arden for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Walter, you have your full complement of spells, but what is your max HP? Uh, 53. Can you roll me a D53 plus 10? Uh, one. What the fuck? Hold on. Don't I, I totally botched that roll. <laughs> He's going to roll oh, a one. Five. Fuck! I double botched it. You have 20 HP All right. currently. Hmm. Uh, Carlias, roll me whatever. What is your max HP? 57. Can you roll me a 57 plus 6? D57 plus 6. You have 45 Ooh. HP out of God 57 or whatever you said, yeah. Um, so, you are drawn into this plane. Um, Walter, you feel particularly weak. Hmm. Um your whatever has drawn you here however you're grounding yourself however you're coping with this again sort of summoning sickness um it's not good hmm. um raja came back strong you came back there's probably a moment where you hold your hand in front of you and it kind of looks a little see-through just for a flicker and uh, um but for the most part you're here you are legitimately here you just feel shit hmm. uh, very weak very tired very sick um, Carlias, you definitely feel a little under the weather. 
Um, you don't feel like you're at your full strength, but for the most part, you probably appear here, figure out what's going on, and then whip out a couple guns, and uh, away we go. That being said, the first person to react um, is uh, Walter. Um, what do, you do I get my sorcery points back? You got everything back. You are reborn. Ooh. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna immediately quicken a haste on Raja and Carlias. Mm -hmm. um, as my action, and then bonus action. Oh god. Oh god. How oh, do you play the, a mage again? Fuck. The, qu uh, the quickened and twinned hastes. Uh, <gasps> uh, 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 oh, sorry. Yeah, not quickened twin. Um, that's it. I think for the. Uh, Oh, no, actually, as a bonus action, I'm going to take um, a couple sorcery points and throw the rest of them into uh, spells. Cool. And that's my turn. Okay, so you two are both haste. Did you remember what that means? Maybe throw the haste in. Yeah, here, let me... Uh, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Means, uh, means I get that one extra swing and that two sweet, sweet, sweet AC. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, uh, we have uh, this now. So in front of you, Walter, you um, you see this thing kick up, um, and uh, it was lying on the floor, but it's kind of being pulled upwards by these invisible almost strings. Mm. It's lifted upwards, and as it does so, you see the uh, strings that are attached to the various body parts of it. Um, down each one, these odd lights fill the creature and begin to pump it full of energy, and it starts to swell and grow um the sandstorm around it and it lets out a tremendous roar as the sandstorm kicks up and explodes once again um let's see here okay so um first things first um hmm, 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 hmm. all right around all of you uh, I'm prepared for this because this is a fucking annoying thing. Mm. Blap, blap. In a 60 foot radius? That's a 60 foot radius. Is he radius, casting a right? spell? No. Oh, okay. Um, this is just a pile of bullshit that it can do. Oh. Um, this wraith like creature um, just creates an enormous roiling cloud of dust and sand. And it's filled, it's very thick. Um, you guys will actually not be able to see through this at all. Um, as these lights infuse the creature with more power, the sands just become a full spectral kind of sandstorm. It's very gray again. It's not really like sand, but it is sand. Um, and inside, you see all these horrible, horrifying shapes, these just visions and terrifying creatures that are silently screaming and swiping at all of you. Um, you have an option right now to decide whether you want to close your eyes and be blinded until the start of your next turn or keep your eyes open and have to do a save. Each, all three of you. Roger will keep his eyes open. Mm -hmm. Can I ask for advantage on the save since Carlias now has his hat back? <laughs> it actually that is goggles. Handy. Yeah, goggles, oh. yeah. Um, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a magic hat. it's not a magic it's not magical at all. It's a, it's what it legit does. No, it doesn't. It, the well in that case I get advantage too. I've got my little sand repellent hood like specifically I'm for put that you purpose. In a so. With a hat, Connor, and see if you can <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I'll I'll close my eyes. Closing eyes. Mm. Uh. Carlias. Keep them open. Keeping them open. All right. So Carlias and um Raja make me wisdom saves. Uh. Do I? Okay. I didn't need the hat. <laughs> no, you've got the hat. Do I? Oh, yeah. that. <laughs> I assume you still have protection from good and evil up or whatever. I, I have protection from evil, and then I also have Slayer's Eye, so if the... I assume it applies, because is is he causing me to make the save, or is it some other creature causing me no, to make the save? Yeah. Okay. So it's... I rolled an 8. 
Uh, okay. Um, that's not good. Mm, is protection from evil and good concentration as well, by the way? Just checking. It is. Okay. Um, so, uh, this actually causes you to become frightened. So you have the frightened condition. Is that a fear? Uh, because if he's got if he's got my old halberd, uh, halberd and is using it, I I oh, traded shoot. the halberd for the magic tolwar, but protection from evil says oh, I can't fuck. be frightened by undeads. I forgot about that. So the spell would negate that. Yeah, I thought it did. That's what I was looking up. But thank you for being. Oh, I can I, I can me. post the text of protection from evil if you want there. Yeah. Uh, brrr, nice. Okay. Yeah, he, he doesn't uh, just keep his eyes open. He wants to stare and make uncomfortably long eye contact with the creature while he's doing it. Yeah. So you would be frightened, but you're not. So I won't make you do any repeat saves and shit. Um, Carlias, all of these things that are freaking you out around you uh, don't freak you out. You've barely come to, you're not even sure if you're still in a dream or, or not, um, but the sands are whipping at your face. Again, you guys do feel cold um, and these sands are hitting you and you feel the damage. So you do feel grounded and, and real. Um, but then, uh, actually, no, that is that is it for now. Um, Raja, roll me a 1d4. Okay. Three. Uh, your hand begins to glow lightly. Uh, but it's not ready yet. What okay. do you want to do? Um, can I see this thing through the sand, or is it, like, completely obscured? Um, you... I would say you can see it because I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you're right next to it. Okay. Um, but in the uh, the 60 foot radius sand cloud thing um, is obscuring everyone's vision unless you're next to it within okay. it. Okay. Well, I, I'm I'm just like referring specifically to if I swing, am I going to swing with like disadvantage because I can't see it or not? Nah? Uh, not if you're next to it. No. Okay. I will I will go ahead and just start hacking away. Cool. With that and that. Uh, let's see here. Um, that is one hit and one critical failure. Woohoo! Uh, the first hit is worth seventeen. Seventeen. Hmm. Um, oh wait, no, oh, that's true. I'm hasted, but you are uh, hasted. You get more bullshit. But do I? I don't. I mean, if I crit failed the second swing, am I even going to get a third swing? Uh, I'm going to say no because on the second swing, your uh, tolwa is is pulled into this this sand storm for a moment, and although you all you do is lose your grip on it um, and co it causes you to drop it, it's right next to you. Uh, it doesn't like whoosh, launch off into the nowhere. Um, it just causes the thing just gets sucked out of your hands and boom lands on the ground um, right next to you. You can pick it straight back up, um, but that would be the end of all of your bullshit. Um, okay. You do hit and you do again feel the same kind of thing as before, where as you hit this slightly larger form now of uh, Sagan Shar, you see another wound open up in it and he bleeds sand. Um, but I guess that's the end of your turn. Uh, yeah, I will. I will pick the uh, weapon back up with my hasted action. Or does it cost an action to pick it back up? Uh, only in this instance because it's a punishment failure. Thing. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. I'll use the. I'll use my hasted action for the turn to just quickly swipe it back up. And um, uh, and yeah. my, I will actually I will move here and then end my turn. Uh, you, do you have bullshit that gets you out of stuff without taking opportunity attacks? Uh, is this not considered in range? Like diagonally still touching it or no? Oh yeah, sorry. I thought you were in that one. I'm quite zoomed out. I thought you were in that one already. So No, no. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm staying within engagement range. I'm just... Basically, I'm moving far enough that if it tries to walk towards Walter, I get the opportunity attack is the idea. Okay. Um, Carlias, your turn. All right, so it's been a while since I was hasted, but uh, first attack is going to be the triple shot with Cerberus. 
So my, let's say my first shot will take a negative three and then negative six, negative nine. One miss. Uh, then negative six, two miss, and then negative nine. That's which makes 15. that 15, which makes that one a hit. One hit. So eight on that. Eight. Um, did we say that if I was to do the triple shot on my first attack, the extra attack would still be usable, or would it take up the entire? No, triple shot is your attack action. So I get the extra attack on that. With the other gun, yeah? Is that what you mean? Uh, the old yeah. Handgun. Yeah. I mean, I'd still have that as the bonus. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it depends on what gun you're using, how you use your attacks, I think. Because Cerberus is now empty, right? Yeah, so I'd have to spend an action to reload. So um, you can only do... Can you use your action to use your offhand weapon? I don't think so, right? You have to use your bonus to do it with your feet. Yeah, it would have to be bonus. So I'd sacrifice my extra attack then. So you can use your action to reload Cerberus, I think. Uh, on the extra attack? Or you could use your hasted action to reload it, and you could use your crossbow offhand attack to fire with scar shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That right. is, I think, so, pretty much all you can do. Yeah. Haste, I'll reload Cerberus, and then the feet will be. Ping, 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 doing that fucking Dark Tower shit. Um, I would love to know how he's like making an offhand attack while simultaneously haste reloading with the other hand. It's on his it's on his belt, so you just like oh, hits yeah. the gun. Oh, I've seen you've seen those one-handed tactical reloads on YouTube, right? Where they like slide the mag out and hold it between their legs or in their armpit and then just and just have it ready to go. He's doing I imagine something. he's done that. Yeah. The uh, the second shot hits. Eleven, but this is from a non-magical weapon, so it's only gonna do half. Um, which brings us to that amount. Um, cool. Um, so, uh, let's see here. The, uh, yeah, Carlias, you just start firing guns. Everyone can hear guns going off from somewhere within this crazy sandstorm. Um, Walter? Um... Okay, um, is this, this is just a field that we're surrounded by? Like, we can walk out of it? Um, I mean, or, meta, or, yeah. or is, it, okay, okay, um, I'm just curious, like. At the moment, all you see is sand and your blind. Oh, okay, you're, you're all right, so we wouldn't, we wouldn't Actually, know. You can now. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I'm gonna take two steps back, uh, or one step back, um. Now that I've opened my eyes, can I see it? Like, I can see the the enemy? No. Actually, Carl Ice couldn't see it either. That being said, but what's done is done. Okay. Um, then I'll go right up to where I can see it. Uh, I'm going to throw fairy fire on it and then use my last few... Fuck, never mind. Uh, just fairy fire. That's it. I'm going to throw fairy fire on it. Okay. What does fairy fire do? I it's, think uh, I sorry, let me... <clears throat> so I want to light it up in a, like, uh, I think I can do blue, green, violet, uh, we'll just do, we'll just do violet so that it will, the both of them can see it and they'll get, a hopefully advantage or it'll cancel out the disadvantage we should have. Yes. Um, well. it's just anything within the, uh, within its little space there, it has to make a dex save, so. Um, ironically, as you uh, cast the fairy fire on it, this sandstorm thing with the, the thickness of it and these things inside of it dissipates a lot. It's still going, but you can easily see through, and now you can make out where Carlias is quite easily within the sandstorm, and you can make out where this creature is, and you can make out where Raja is as this thing ends. Uh, but it's... you still have the fairy fire on it, and it okay. still does all Yeah, it still needs, it needs to make a deck save throw. Right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is it to not be in it? Uh, it's to, like, not... I, I don't know, yeah, maybe dive out of it, or... I think this is a straight-up foul. 11? Um, yeah, it's against my DC, so, yeah. It's a fail. So, uh, it would cool, just yeah, light so up it's... in Violet, and then they get advantage if, uh, they attack it. 
nice um yeah the um horrific creature thing in front of where all of you guys are turns and now in it can see where you all are as well it begins to thrash wildly from left to right with this um slightly bolstered slightly larger body it seems like it's swelling and filled with sand like it's like an old man's body that's been like overfilled with something overstuffed with sand um it's pouring out of his eyes and his mouth his nose his ears and all the wounds that have already been um placed on him including a couple of bullet holes which are just pouring sand out um it is going to wildly attack you know what? i'm gonna do it with this um blap 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 uh one uh, let's see here so uh two to raja one to walter that's how this is gonna go so we'll go with that one that one the mass has got too much for me and i'm having to use the actual goal 20. wait walter stepped in range of the walter uh what is your ac walter uh should be port no uh 12 but i'm gonna use my is it an attack yes okay i'm gonna use my reaction to use shield and give myself five ac to make it 17. okay um uh raja 19 hits you yeah uh, no, because with haste, my AC is up to 21. Ooh, nice. Okay. In that case, uh, this thing is just spinning around wildly. Its hu huge form is trying to, like, swipe at you. Um, the, the sands harden around its hands as it does so. And, um, Raja, you jump um, quickly out of the way of the first swipe. Um, a, a following piece of the sandstorm comes around and hardens to try and hit you again. And then this thing spins um, low. Um, to go for you as well, Walter. And as this thing is about to strike you, um, you bring up this magical shield and mm. it just <laughs> hits this invisible barrier, the sand breaking and dissipating. The thing kind of rages silently. And... That is the end of its turn. Raja, roll me another d4. Okay. Another three. Yes, your other hand begins to faintly glow. Um, the first hand is glowing a little brighter, but it doesn't have that full fire to it yet that you had when you were able to summon Walter and Carlias back. Um, but I'm sure you can work out what's happening. But for now, right. you don't have that ability. Those ghostly forms of Lash and Arden are just stood there like ghostly dummies, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfilled and um, for the record Walter and Carlisle you can't see him uh Raja uh well since he put the uh the good old fairy fire on it I'm gonna go ahead and take my two swings at it mm -hmm. uh and both of them are gonna be great weapon strikes so minus five accuracy plus 10 damage so there's the first which is a 13 and then uh, okay that is a miss okay there is the second which is a 21 that is a hit and then the third for my hasted attack which is a 25 that is a hit two hits oh, i'm sorry it's a 20. Still okay hits. so that is it is 13 plus 12 plus uh one plus four, so it's five. Uh, that is 50 damage total. Okay, so um, you start uh, spinning and swinging, slicing and dicing and cutting holes into this thing again. Um, it's just raging. Uh, again, continues to just wildly swing. It doesn't really try to defend itself. It just it just seems to be crazy and wild and random. Um, so you're just easily chopping bits, um, slices. These areas are, again, just bleeding sand. Um, it does pile spectrally around its legs um, before being pulled up into its own kind of um, sandstorm again. 
and you do 50 black 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 damage all magical damage yeah yes um hmm. oh by the way um this thing is considered an undead not a fiend correct just for clarification undead, yes okay um cool uh and your turn uh yes that is the end of my turn Carlias. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna do two shots normally with Cerberus. I get advantage on these, right? Uh, for the fairy fire, yeah. One hit, two hits. All the damage for those. And then haste is another attack, so that'll be the third roof. Cerberus. And then uh, bonus. Yep. Another then... crit. Another and that's as well. Okay. Um... So give me the total magic damage. <laughs> But like in the background over here, you just have just <laughs> just fucking thirty-six firing, thirty-six magic. Yeah, and, and then, then non-magic nine. Uh, all right, so all of these bullets go off. Um, holes just start appearing in various places over this thing's body, pissing sand everywhere. Um, the thing doesn't seem bothered at all. Um, but it also didn't really seem bothered when, like, Raja was cutting into its head and shit. So, um, but you are definitely aware that you're causing this thing damage. It, again, the, um, the sort of swollen form that it has begins to um, shrink a little as it starts to bleed sand. Uh, Anything else on your turn? No, that'll be it. Walter? Um, all right, I'm going to throw a magic missile at uh, third level. Uh, so 17 damage. And then... Okay. Do I have any fucking bonus actions? <laughs> Except for... Mm. I, no, I, uh, then I'd probably come down uh, a little closer to, uh, to Raja. And that's it. The thing... Um, Raja, you see, again, um, the sands build up around this thing, but not in the same way as it did previously, where it made this blockable thick sand it just starts to harden lots of the sand and spin the um the sands up and it kicks and it rages wildly it doesn't even try and swipe you anymore it just opens up its mouth and lets out this burst of sand from around it i need everybody to make me a deck save please i think everybody i'm pretty sure yeah everybody um i'm gonna oh, no. yell oh. watch out after they get hit by it. <laughs> I'm gonna do uh, Tides of Chaos to do uh, advantage on this. Okay. Okay. Uh... That's 20. That's not bad. Did you roll, Roger? Uh, no, I was double checking because one of the things I was reading, oh yeah, I'm hasted, that's what it is. Uh, so I have a, you have uh... Carlias, you also have advantage on your deck save from haste. Hmm. Oh, okay. Um, I'll just roll another normal. Uh, all right. So, Carlias, you're going to fail. Uh, Walter, you're going to make it. And uh, Raja, you're going to make it. So, you two will take half. Carlias, you'll take the full brunt of 20 slashing damage. Um, the sands kick up around you and just <laughs> cut everything um, within your... Uh, area. This thing uh, now 
<laughs> is able to. All right, everyone, uh, Raj, don't even bother. Everyone else, give me, you two give me a wisdom save. <laughs> Did I get advantage on this? Uh, what is this for? This is a fear. Do we get advantage or just not? I don't know, do you? Why would you get advantage? I don't think you, uh, there's nothing, haste doesn't do anything. Haste is only for deck saves. Uh, it's a charm, not a fear. Fear is uh, a form of charm. But yeah, I mean it's no specifically versus the charm action. I think is what I have advantage on. Uh, Wiz, you said yeah. sorry. That's true. Right. There you go. Five. Oof. Uh, all right. So Carlias, um, this thing lets out like a terrifying roar. The sands kick up around it, um, and as they drop, um, you look at this thing, and like more of its face is falling off. It looks absolutely horrifying now. Um, it kind of hulks over with the sand dripping out of it. It's almost just a skeleton. These rips of flesh um, in this weird ghostly form are all but gone. And um, but could I say from the reverie that Carlias had, he has more of a, like a driven passion now to not be the Craven Dwarf. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so he's just like, they ain't gonna phase me this time, you bitch. Not today. Um, yeah, you have actually fought this before, actually, haven't you? You won't be won this thing in this same place, pretty much. Um, you're the only one with any experience here, so probably you can use that as well. That being said, Walter, you all but piss your pants um, as maybe you come round to the front of this thing and it lets out that roar. Um, you are now uh, uh, frightened. Frightened, yeah. Okay. Um, which means... Uh, you have disadvantage on ability to attack rolls while the source of your fear is within a line of sight and you can't willingly move closer. You don't have to run away. Uh, remember that. Hmm. Stupid thing. Um, Raja. Did Brad suddenly get quieter for everyone else? Yeah, you got way quiet for me. Oh, no, not It's again. just when he turns. No, it's just when you turn your head. Okay. No, he's I'm definitely, like, no, you, he's you went definitely down, much like, quieter. Yeah, you went down a couple. Really? What about now? There you go. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. That works. My mic just went out earlier on and I'm amazed it's still going. I think it might be dead. I have my gain at like 200. Here, well. Very scary. <laughs> it's going to snap back to normal and destroy our eardrums within that 20. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it's going to happen at some point. Um, what was I saying? Oh, Raja, your, your left hand now is fully aflame. You can bring back uh, one of your comrades. Uh, okay. Does it look like Arden's paying attention now? Neither of them. They're nothing. They're like mannequins. Okay. They Neither of them are there at all. They're my NPCs right now. They cannot, they cannot influence you. Okay, <laughs> so... I don't want to meta too hard, so I need to know. <laughs> Can Raja tell how badly injured Walter is? Um... No, probably not, because he's not physically wounded. He just feels shit. You know, he has like an internal summoning sickness kind of thing going on. Okay. Um, he looks kind of shit, but he also looks feared as well. So he just looks kind of normal, I would say. Okay, then I will. He's gonna he's gonna summon Arden. Arden. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You're even lower now, Brad. Brad, are you there? Oh, no, no, no you <laughs> muted levels. He's gone. <laughs> no, not the DM, I destroyed no. destroyed him. Um, probably a good time to go to a break. Thanks, Yay! everyone, for watching. Oh, we'll be right back. We're so sorry that Shagan Sarashaba took over Brad's microphone. Sagan Sarasha.
Welcome back, my children, to the astral plane of death. Um, Let's ixnay that very fire real quick. I don't care if I lose a turn. Raja we'll just it. doesn't do con checks, apparently. Walter doesn't do con checks, apparently. And also, Walter can do two concentration spells at the same time. Just remember that, okay? <laughs> Everybody remember that. When, meta, I, guys. when I bullshit kill them at some point with something, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, well... Um, <laughs> hey, don't blame, don't blame blame them on Car on Carlias though. Uh, I think we can still find a way. All Carlias' fault because he didn't come into the arena. Yeah, we he literally wouldn't be in the this situation. I'm gonna rip you a new one, Jack. I <laughs> would not have casted Fairy Fire after haste. Arden, my child. <laughs> would you like me to roll initiative? No. Oh. I would like to know. Uh, I'd like you to die. I would like you to die, Mr. No, Pond. Mr. Pond. I expect you to die. I um, asked a similar question of the others in the same way that Raja had to find uh, himself in a reverie and a memory, something that helps ground him to who he is and his purpose, his character. Um, what do you think Arden has seen or where do you think he's been or what do you think it is that can help him bind himself to his character um it's actually going back to it's actually going back to when the party first came together probably the first couple weeks of actual traveling inside the realm and finally coming to see that having people around you and having roots even if it is mobile roots is actually something that's good considering his past trauma with his long lost love and uh, the fact that he's conned his way through many families, lives and women. Uh, after that, it's kind of nice actually to have people that he can finally rely on. And hmm. hence he took the deaths of Raja and many of the others so hard. Cause as things were finally coming together, it started falling apart on him again. Yeah. Um, I think as you went through your own reverie in this memory and you replay basically the beginning of the campaign, um, maybe with some strange twists and some things mm -hmm. that didn't happen. Again, you probably experienced a lot of these sort of strange sandstorms that happen. Um, and piece by piece, you um, regain yourself and who you are and your purpose. And you uh, as well as the others have done, pass through that reverie. You're hit by a sandstorm. As you come to, you find yourself now, once again, somewhat corporeal. Hmm. Um, you're in this place. But you come in in the middle of a pure shitstorm. Um, you, around you again, you're in this black darkness all around but there is mostly just sandstorms and a spectral set of um sands just whipping about hitting you instantly um there's a large sand creature zombie thing swiping at your comrades um you see raja as he brings his hand down maybe grab his tolwar again and avoid a swipe from this creature um, you see Walter looking a little scared, backing up from this thing, and uh, you see Carlias reloading a gun to one side of you, and you appear uh, here. Can you roll me an initiative? Let's see. Whoops, I don't think I had my character collect selected. In All right, so I'll just do it again and change it. No, 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 I got it. Okay. Um, and also, what is your maximum HP? 40. Can you roll me a D? 40 plus 3. Uh, you have 21 HP. Um, maybe your whatever it is that binds you to this place was quite weak. Um, and uh, although you've, not, you've managed to bring yourself forth, the summoning sickness, this thing that's happened, this weakness passes over you and you don't feel great. Um, but you don't feel bad. You're here, and uh, there's a shit ton of stuff going on around you, including whatever Raja does now. 
<clears throat> uh, Raja is going to continue doing his. Okay, so um, the haste slash fairy fire thing. How are we? How are we resolving that? Um, the haste. I, I, I are, we, or are we just leaving it as is? We can retcon it and just say the fairy fire didn't go off. That's the easiest thing to do, rather than just. Okay. Yeah. Um, then in that case, I will. I'm just going to continue going chop, chop, chop uh, and hit it a couple more times. What? Uh, but with regular strikes, not great weapon. Uh, one. Two. And three. Uh, two hits. Uh, so that is 27. Uh, 27. Cool. Great. Yeah, sure. Um, you uh, spin around, swipe in, slicing, dicing again, cutting bits off of this thing. Behind you, you see the sort of um, form of Arden fill with that fire that left your hand, and he regains sort of a consciousness, looks about him, tries to get his bearings. Um, and then you begin slicing and dicing, cutting bits off of um, this wraith form of Sagan Shara's strange sand wraith. Um, anything else? Uh, nope, that's it. I don't need to roll the 1d4 this turn. Alrighty then. Um, no, that, that was a question. I, I don't need to roll the 1d4 oh. this turn. Uh, no, you've already done it. Okay. It's happening. The flame in your hand is building. Um, the distant voice of Lash toying with you as if she is on her way. Um, but not here yet. Um, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, thank you for activating my reactions. Uh, who is within 15 feet, everyone? Can everybody make me a dexterity saving throw, please? Okay, you two have advantage, don't forget. Carlisle. Oh, I'm just gonna roll another one. 22. <laughs> that's the second 14. time that's happened. Uh, that's so mm -hmm. funny. Uh, nine. Jesus Lord. Okay, so everyone <coughs> but Raja is going to fail. Um, okay, so everyone will take. Is Sorry, is this a spell that he's casting or no? Nope, this is some bullshit happening to you right now. <laughs> oh, <man>. uh, <clears throat> the sandstorm and the thing are, are swiping wildly at you. Above you, you hear a booming sound, like a thunder boom, like a boom. And then from above where these strings are coming from, this uh, wave of force strikes the ground where the sand is um, prominent and falling out from underneath this um, uh, wraith. The ground, which is not even really there, shakes and and uh, is hit by this concussive force. Raja, you uh, presumably jump. I don't know why it's a deck, <laughs> but it is. Uh, everyone else is hit with 13 bludgeoning damage and is knocked prone. 17 didn't save, right? It did not. Does this count as damage from it or the bullshit thunder thing in the sky? This counts as damage from it. Okay, I'm gonna use Hellish Rebuke on the reaction. Um, at mm. third level, um, to it has to make a Dex save or take uh, 23 points of damage. Well, that's a two. It's failed. Okay, so it takes 23 <laughs> points of fire damage. How much? Sorry. 23 points of fire damage. Uh, yeah, you, um, you, uh, get hit by this, like, concussive wave, and as you're probably being launched up, you just, whoosh, 
uh, ignite underneath where this wraith creature thing is. The fires engulf it, um, and the rest of you take the 13 bludgeoning, and again, remember that you are prone. Um, oh. That's, that's oh. full damage if we fail, yeah? I think you're all good, yeah. actually, huh? I'm down right after that, then. Oh, you're down? That means you can't do the Hellish Rebuke, then. No, the, the reaction still goes off if you... Are if you, you sure? get knocked unconscious. Um... Hold on. Da, da, da. Oh, no, no, because I would have taken damage and... Yeah, then it would have, wouldn't have gone off. Because it would have dropped me and then I would have had to take damage. So, yeah, I'm down. So... How much damage did that do? It was... Uh, 21? Two, 23 to it. You have 23. To take Sorry. So, yeah, you just, this concussive wave hits everyone, um, but as he's on the ground, Walter doesn't move. Um, I would like everybody to note that while on the ground, Walter immediately begins to very slowly turn to sand. Carlias, your turn. All right, immediately I'm going to use my bonus to second wind which is a regain hit points uh, 1d10 plus yeah. 7 10 so 15 points back um, and then it's going to be normal shots but this time though um, I'm going to action search, <clears throat> reload Cerberus. Mm. And then with my normal action, uh, but I'm going to reload Cerberus with uh, the frost bullets that I have. Yep. So then, am I still hasted or since? Uh, no. No. Yeah, your hastes drop. Just two shots then with Cerberus. Actually, uh, first shot will be grip point, so advantage. And then mm. normal. Yeah, yeah. Hit. Uh, hit. Miss. Oh, wait, this is damage. No, this is damage. Uh, so 23. How much uh, did the bullets do again? Uh, what do they give you? An extra 1d4 cold? Uh, yeah, plus 1d4 cold. Let's roll 2d4. Okay, so in That's total, 28. 28. Uh, yeah, so you just fire another couple of these shots off. They pierce through this thing, but behind it, they leave this kind of frost which spreads over the wound. Um, the thing doesn't care. Continues to just swing wildly at everybody around it. Um, is that the end of your turn? Uh, on the action surge, do I get another bonus back? Uh, on the action search, you get a what? Do I get my bonus back as well? No. No. Okay. Yep, that's the end. That's you done? Yep. Uh, cool. So. Oh, uh, for my movement, can I get up? Since I'm prone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arden. Um. I. Can I ask you something uh, out of character, Mr. DM? Yeah. Um, I, I would love for this to happen because this is totally an ardent thing to do. But he so he just pops in and uh, can I cash banishment and banish him from this plane for a minute? Would the spell work? Let's see what the spell does. Banishment, five e. I can I can pop it into the. The thing too, if you want, by clicking mm. it. So you attempt to send one creature you see within range to another plane of existence. Target must succeed on a charisma saving throw or be banished. 
Target is native to the plane of existence you're on. You banish to a harmless enemy plane, whereas the other target returns into a spell into which your target reappears. The spell is native to a different plane. The target is banished with the faint popping noise. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to cast this. Hell yeah, because that'll give us a minute to <laughs> to watch a uh, rotato turn into sand. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so there you go. Uh, he's got to make a 16 charisma. I hate to tell you this, but it's an 11. The um, the mm -hmm. weird spectral demonic form of uh, Sagan Shara just kind of like at, brings up a, a huge hand, brings it down towards where Walter is, and then <sighs> he's gone. The um, form and the sand all <sighs> vanish. You guys are left here um, by yourselves for a moment. Um, well, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but now that that guy's gone, um, uh, Walter, uh, can I, can I fix this? Good to see you too. Oh, hello. Um, I'm, your nightmares are weird. I'm dead. I assume that's oh, yours. I'm Walter, conscious. make me a cat what's going on? <laughs> Yeah, can I go medical check, Walter? Yeah. It's sand. <laughs> Walter doesn't look good. Oh, oh, yeah, ten percent. Bye, Brad. That <laughs> microphone now. Just He's get an animation of him turning to sand and flying away. <laughs> Brad doesn't feel good. Is that what's going on? Oh no! <laughs> Not the mic again. Yeah, it worked last time though. It, it'll probably. I don't work. feel so good, guys. Yeah, it works. Hello. Oh, hey. He's back. It just needs attention every once in a while. It's really weird. Okay. Um, okay, so we have one minute of peace. It looks very bad. Uh, can I roll a medical check? See if I can fix him? Because um, I would assume I could just heal him, but I, I don't. I, I just literally popped in here. I was like, yo! What's up? That's yeah. fucked up. <laughs> this spell... <laughs> This spell is totally like outlawed in so many campaigns too. <laughs> as That's soon as you said it, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. I love I just love that Arden comes in and is like, nah. <laughs> just, <laughs> no. Last minute hero. Yeah. We'll we'll see. Um so, <laughs> Yep, he's uh, sand. Do I charge up my magic summoning hand during this period or nah? Like, can we bring Lash in or no? Well, yeah, let me do one thing at a time. So you um, you bring him back, or you want to stabilize him. Is that what you're doing? Oh, the same thing, right? They just bring me to one. What's that? You're just bringing him to one? Uh, well, I need to see if I can, if I'm going to heal. My main purpose is, I don't know what the crap's going on. Everybody's dying. Let's get everybody back. So yeah, if I can bring him back to one, and then just, I'm going to start healing everybody. Okay, so I'd say you can uh, begin doing that. Call, you can okay. cast, uh, yeah, you can you can cast a few spells. Yeah, you got okay. Time. All right, so I'll just cast uh, cure wounds like three times. I don't know who who all everybody line up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> all right, so Walter, there you go. It's ten. Uh, it's probably hit you again. So I have eighteen. Ooh. Um, Carlias, Raja, how are we looking? How tapped out, or like, how tapped out is I'm, your magic as far I'm as good. like, how many times can you heal? I can pop a couple uh, more here. Uh, okay. Give me like one, but I have my own sources of healing because like I have cure wounds and heal potions on me. All right, I'll so drop a level two on you, Raja. So that's ten. Okay. And uh, Carlias, you're injured, right? Um. I got a little ways, but I can't heal myself at this point. Okay. Uh, I'll hit you with a level two as well. Let's take 17. Jesus. How um, long is it going to be gone for, Arden? Um, well, uh, let's see. Du, du, du. Uh, another like 30 seconds. Okay. okay. Does that anybody magic, need more heals? Real quick. Uh, that magic say. circle spell you did to hold the vampire in place, could you put it right here where it's going to reappear? Um, do, do, do. Just kind of like cataloging in my head. That'll um, take too long to draw. Nope, not today. <laughs> okay, uh, Brad, can I reload him this time? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna real quick, uh, twin a spell uh, again. I'm gonna haste Carlias and Raja. 
So um, this is your doing, right, Raja? Because it looks sand and ghosts. And... Uh, yeah. No, this is his doing, and I, he's pointing at like where the thing was. Where'd it go? He's. It's a long story. He. I. I. I know him, but I had nothing to do with whatever he's done. But he's coming back, right? Or oh he's yes, going, he's coming back. That's that spell he used. He'll be back in like fifteen seconds. Uh, and I'm gonna look over and got uh, a is, lot of talking to do. That spell is there lash? anything I can? Yeah. Brad, can I, I desecrate anything? <laughs> is there anything here? <laughs> can I desecrate anything? There's no vampires to piss on or anything? That's my favorite question. <laughs> well, isn't there already piss from... Uh... <laughs> Walter There's Walter. always yeah. piss. There's um, always... That's the... <laughs> the uh, no, there's... That's my secret cat. It's always this piss. Is, uh, yeah. Uh, what was you going to do? One last thing. Uh, I was going to oh. check and see if I can summon Lash in some way or not. Yes. The fire in your hand has uh, filled, and you uh, feel like you would be able to bring Lash forth. Okay, I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna just kind of wave at her or pull or whatever I need to do. Well, the uh, fire uh, leaves your hands and uh, heads towards the area where Lash's weird spectral dummy thing is. It hits the form of Lash, and then she disappears, and it disappears too. Whilst what? Uh, whilst uh, Raj is doing that, um, could Carlias try and commune with Kalimbor? Because when no. the first time Carlias, <laughs> well, like try and <laughs> like somehow summon no. him. Uh, I would say no. You've got bigger fish to fry um, right now because the well, uh, like a quick prayer. Like the winds are picking up and the things coming back. I'll basically, throw out mirror image straight back in. Don't and I'd notice. like to cast no. one spell. Walter, no. stand back. Stay out of harm's way this time. Yeah, sorry. The right. winds pick up and immediately around you, <laughs> this fucking thing just appears again. Screeching, sands, everything kicks up, but not before we head elsewhere to, let me just put your characters here <laughs> so that you guys can see. Wait, did, uh, did Lash. Lash appear or nah? Nope. Lash ain't there. Lash is the least cared about member and was brought forth last. <laughs> Therefore, Lash does not have the power that you provide as a group to get back. Rip. Lash, you, uh, you probably had a similar reverie to everybody um, and you would have been in a dreamlike state just like the others, when you were reduced to sand, um, in order to ground yourself and try and bring yourself back, um, you will have seen something or been through something or revisited a memory. What do you think Lash would have seen or where she would have been? She would have been back in the home of the Kanku, which was uh, called the Kettle Pits, but it was the Kettle Lith Clan, and she would have seen Elder Alden placing the sapphire around her neck and call at her side, having just received his and just kind of basking in that, like, we did it, we're awesome. Mm. Uh, you know, we're kind of heroes of the clan for a moment before everything goes to to pot. Yeah, and um, I think, yeah, you would have had a similar thing in that the, um, the strange sand storm things would have kept picking up and interfering with this memory in uh, some way. Eventually, the memory would have been completely disrupted as the sandstorm maybe as this um the elder is bringing the sapphire around your neck <clears throat> the walls close in the sands explode forth bringing this cave in down around you and uh bringing you to this strange plane where the others are however you do not appear in the area that everybody else is in you appear elsewhere the same look to everything it's mm -hmm. fully black you do feel your form again your halfling self you feel like you've appeared here there's nothing but blackness and darkness there is a sense of gravity you do have a kind of mortal physical form um ahead of you there is a kenku um the black feathers have no shine to them though it's like a matte black um the dark beak under a hood 
a very familiar looking bow on her back. <clears throat> Ahead of you is Shadow Lash. Mm. It's you. Yeah. It's what looks like you. And it's sitting there with its legs crossed, its beak kind of chittering. It doesn't seem to have seen you yet. What do you want to do? Rush over to me. <laughs> like, I think I would have a very emotional response to this. First of all, I haven't seen a Kenku in forever. <laughs> Mm. Second of all, that appears to be uh, a very unhappy reflection of myself. So I would rush over and grab this thing if I can feel it, um, grab it by the shoulders and... Who are you? As you grab it by the shoulders, give me a constitution saving throw first. Oh, snap. I got this, boys. Seventeen. Uh, you grab onto the shoulders of this, and as you say, who are you, and grab onto it, your hands feel the icy cold feathers and flesh of this thing underneath. Um, you immediately take four necrotic damage as your hands almost burn underneath this thing. You snatch them back. Looking at your now halfling hands, you see a kind of scorch marks, burn marks on them, almost like a frostbite. Um, the thing in front of you turns to you, and its eyes much darker black than you ever remember. For a moment, you almost get lost in them. It says, answer my questions, you will, and allow you to pass, I shall. What questions and who are you? I'm just gonna demand that over and over again, stressed out. <laughs> it stands up, but doesn't stand to full height. It kind of seems kind of hunched um, and it kind of, looks at you a little and its beak continues to quiver and, and chitter as if it doesn't have full control over what it is. And it says, mm. meaning is there, purpose is there, discuss, answer. I don't know what you mean. <sighs> Where are we? This place. Me, you, all the same, all irrelevant. Answer my question. What is the meaning to life? No one knows the answer to that. No, no one's ever known the answer to that. The, uh, the form grows smaller and more hunched. It <gasps> physically shrinks in front of you and says, Ha! <laughs> Lost wanderer. And then uh, it chitters and its beak kind of opens for a moment and worms fall from it. it. Oh my God. I think right as it's shrinking, you just, Lash never screams, but at that point she just screams, love, like love. <sighs> and who do you love? I love, I love you. And then I just feel like I'm looking at a reflection of myself and like it needs love. I, I love you. I love my friends. I love Raja. I love Call and and Kess and and Alden. The form listens to what you're saying, but almost seems to be kind of twisting and shaking. It moves a little too quickly, um, and then turns on you again and says, "Our choices then are free. Another agent determines our so-called acts of will." Well, we're free. We're, no, one, no one decides. And as I say that, I look down at my tattoo from Mistra and I kind of, we decide. The, uh, the strange form lifts up a, a hand and there's a, uh, a similar tattoo of Mistra on it. And then the tattoo forms into a, a kind of a manacle. Um, a ball and chain appears and it shrinks again, getting smaller in front of you. And it says, <sighs> this is one which has the power to determine. No, how can you have free will if you work for this? I, I don't work for anyone. 
he uh or it says uh a random life lived then is as meaningless as a life of dedicated choice random life isn't meaningless neither is a life of choice all life has meaning the uh the creature grows smaller again and by now it's very small it's like the size of uh, like a cat um and uh it says <sighs> your answers they come from your heart or from your mind or from another from from my heart follow your heart you will yes which way will you go and then it disappears leaving you completely alone here What do you do? I probably scream. Where are you? Where did you go? Where am I? And I, if I can see that, the, like I'm not just floating on some uneven ground, I would start just kind of dashing around. Um. Yeah, you can <sighs> run. Uh, I'd be looking for walls, direction. I guess, you know. Yeah, give me a perception check. Walls and doors. You find nothing. You probably wander for what feels like maybe like a full hour. Um, it feels like a very long time of just wandering. There's no walls. There's no nothing. It's just you, um, the ground, nothing else. Um, after a little while, you hear a voice coming from nowhere again, almost like it's in your mind, but almost like it is echoing off of some walls around you. And it says, disoriented or misplaced, disappeared or forfeit, which will it be? I'm just disoriented. I I can find my way given time. I, and I haven't, I haven't been displaced. Hmm. This is just I some just... trick. You are lost, wanderer. You belong to me now. I don't belong to you. I don't even... Who are you? <laughs> uh, you continue wandering. You're going to see something you haven't seen before, and that is just Lash looking like super pissed and frustrated but maybe also stronger than she normally does um and she's going to lift off the ground and mm. and raise into the air yes you can fly now you have a pretty good flying speed mm -hmm. of 50 feet 50 feet um which means you can fly faster than you can run mm -hmm. um and uh what does it look like how do you do you just fly like fucking superman so yeah, I don't think it's uh, it's quite as comical as Superman. I don't leave one fist behind me, but I <laughs> and I have one in front. Um, I think you probably just notice an effect of the the feathery cape kind of fluttering as I just uh, I rise up, um, and I would be talking back to this now ethereal voice and just saying, "I'm not afraid of you, and I'm not going to be lost forever." I'll. I'll find my way out of here and I'll find my friends. The, uh, as you fly, now you're just flying upwards. And again, you can just continue to fly upwards. You don't see anything or feel anything different, though you probably do feel a sense of wind. Mm -hmm. And like, so you do have the uh, sensation of flying. You don't just feel like you're not moving because in this blackness, it would be a little weird. Mm -hmm. uh, the voice um, whispers back again towards you and says, your friends care not for you. They are already returned, left you behind, they have. You belong to me. That's a lie, they would never leave me. You took me from them, they would never leave me. The uh, sky above you cracks open, just a little. As you fly upwards, 
there's a very small thin slither of light coming through what looks like a crack it says to you go then but perhaps a kiss goodbye no and i head straight for the the light uh as you reach the crack the uh the voice says see you soon cast away and you can hit this crack now like you're you've hit the ceiling and uh through the crack you can hear the sounds of the others who are fighting with the returned horrific monstrous creature oh dear known as Sagan Shara right so for now you are not there however other ones around you this motherfucker appears once again and it's probably horrendous because it was peaceful for a moment and then suddenly like and immediately like a snap you're back in a fucking sandstorm with this fucking screeching thing the uh the thing just appears it just pops into existence again and you guys are back in i'm gonna just restart the initiative order but You've done some bullshit. Um, what did you set up? Does anything happen? Anything I need to do? Because you set up some shit. Um, I would have liked mm. to have caused a, a cast and spirit guardian if possible. Right yep. Before. That's it. Okay. Um, I will just have... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll... In the dead time that we had for a few seconds there, I'll just... Apply the flaming oil thingamajig to my sword. Which, All I, right. haven't ha- which I haven't used in a uh, while. I threw up mirror image, so there was three of me, and Carlias and Raja are hasted again. That's it. Okay. Um, so I don't need to do any mad rolls straight away, right? Uh, Unless we can ready an action to attack spirit. it as it comes in. No. <laughs> Uh, have enough. Would it, would it trigger spirits as it comes in or no? Uh, not, not it's turn of its turn. Oh. Yeah, it's I like, I oh, was me. I was gonna go say like I was gonna count fifteen paces because I had had the time, but I didn't. Hmm. So. Um. All right. So the beginning of the turn order is Walter. What do you want to do on your turn? <clears throat> um. Uh. Gonna throw. A, uh, I'm gonna quicken an Eldritch Blast uh, into uh, a bonus action. Uh, throw that at him, mm. um, and then also do a cold chromatic orb towards him. So three range attacks. <clears throat> okay. So there's one. Um, just wanna make sure. Yeah. Okay. It is two at, at fifth level. Good shit. Um, 19 and 17 for the Eldritch. Uh, two hits. Okay. Um, and then Cold Chromatic Orb, 24 to hit. Hit. Cool. Uh, so the Blasts do 12, and then he takes, uh, 18 cold damage. Yeah. And that's it. What is that in total? Just 18? Uh, no. Sorry, sorry. Uh, 12, uh, 30. It's just so much easier to give it a total. Yeah, 30 total damage. Why? Yeah, you just fucking unleash hell on this mm. thing as soon as it lands in front of you. And uh, it acts as if it hasn't been anywhere. It doesn't look like anything has changed. Um, it continues to just rage randomly and wildly in any direction um, with these semi-translucent invisible strings that seem to be attached to it um and then the sands kicking up around it constantly um let's see here uh carlias and raja will you please roll me dexterity saving throws <coughs> oh boy with advantage since we're hasted. Why do you get advantage? 
hasted. Hasted. Oh, the haste. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, two makes. You only take half of the 12 slashing damage. The sands around this thing kick up again and begin to uh, slice at you. Then... Nothing happens. Raja. Your oh. turn. Okie doke. Oh, wait, no. Raja, start of Raja's turn. Start of Raja's turn. Lash, give me a constitution saving throw. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Everyone give me a perception check, apart from Lash. <laughs> Walter, you don't see it, mm. but a fucking <laughs> tiny little hand appears out of the ground for a moment and grabs onto something before being pulled back under. And then the 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 like you don't even see a hole because it's just blackness. But it would look like somebody's hand just bursts through the ground and then disappears again. Um, Carlias, you recognize the nails or something uh that is lash's hand or roger your normal moment. turn uh wh where did we see this occur you saw it in precisely this circled area it's underneath where lash's little um right. spectral form would have been right lash can I... You saw that too. Oh. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Hang on. And uh, he's just going to assume it's Lash because he just tried to summon her anyway. Um, yep. I will. I will just continue going ham on this thing because that seems to be the best course of action. So I'm going to go one, two. And uh, I'll make the third one a great weapon strike just for the giggles. There we go. Uh, all hits. <laughs> Where's my calculator? <laughs> 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 He's got so many little plus ones and plus twos here and there. Okay, so that is... Uh, you thought I was joking. <laughs> Forty-six points of damage. Fifty-eight, and then sixty-eight, isn't it? Plus, no, wait, let's not fuck him up. No, no, don't, don't screw me up. Okay, so it's, yeah. it's the three swings, and then it's the plus ten for the great weapon strike. It's plus two per hit, uh, from his bonus versus undead. It's plus the extra one d six, uh, from Slayer's Eye, and then it would be plus. How many swings did we determine I get before the fire goes out on my flaming sword? I haven't. We haven't used it in like twenty episodes, so I can't remember. I didn't even know you had a flaming sword. That's how much I recall. So he he carries uh, oil flasks on him and then ignites oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've used it in the past, but like only when I have downtime have I bothered using it. So it's been a little while. But it was something like he gets. Did you say it was for, it was one minute or like a set number of swings? I honestly don't remember. I think we based it on the oil that you uh, that is an actual thing. So let's have a look. Oil is uh, an oil flask. Um, does an extra five damage of fire apparently per round. Mm -hmm. So it takes an additional five fire damage. So I guess we'll just do an extra additional five fire damage. For okay. For whatever. Per swing. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Fuck it. That was the yeah, why not? As it gets a hundred more HP to balance. Yeah. It against them. Well, no, I mean, like, I'm trying to figure out how long before the thing goes out. But I, either way, that totals out with the crit and everything. It's 81 damage. Uh, how do you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like wow. you needed to do 70, which is hysteric. <laughs> <laughs> he. He's gonna he's gonna take two left or take two horizontal swings at it and as it like 
makes little gouges in the sand. He just kind of sees that opening and he runs up and uses them as footsteps to just impale it through the forehead. Hmm. And as you do so, the uh, again, the others see this wild fucking jump, stab, flame craziness. Lash, give me a constitution saving throw. The last one went so well. I have nothing to worry about. Can I about. help her on that? Because Carlias would have gone over to where the hand was. Yeah, you don't need to. Um, the form of Sagan Shara is immediately um, uh, quelled. The sandstorm around him dissipates again exactly the same way as it did before for you, um, Raja. And the old man underneath um is it just drops the strings that are attached to his hands his legs and his neck shatter again and the old man is just boom hits the ground um you remove the toll wire from his face but he remains conscious um the wounds again begin to kind of heal but not in the same way as they did previously. Mm -hmm. uh, Colias to your right. Yep. A tiny hand bursts through and starts scrabbling around. Yeah, I'll run over and grab it. You pull <laughs> the tiny little halfling hand and almost as if you're like pulling somebody up out of the earth. Um, Lash, you from the other side push through this crack and uh, it's a struggle. The thing is like closing around your wrist and it pushes you and there's a force that stops you until at some point you feel another hand grip you and you're able to make it through. Lash, you appear. So I'm just kind of like born into this room here. <laughs> you are born again. You've all been born again in a, in a way. Um, and uh, in front of you, you see uh, Raja standing over the form of this very old man, very ghostly looking, spectral. Um, Walter beyond that, Arden behind you, and Carlias has you by one hand as you um, stand. Um, on the ground in front of you, Raja, Sagan Shara's wounds are sort of closing, but in a different way. The uh, wounds in terms of the slashes, the cuts, the bullet holes, um, even the bits of his skin that are kind of hanging off, they take on a slight glow to them around the edges um, that begin to kind of light the room a little. Um, and as he his, his body kind of closes up and heals, his translucent form remains, but he starts to look a lot more human and a lot less ghastly and a lot less um, horrific to everybody. He says, uh, holding a, a hand up to you kind of pleadingly, he transformed me into this and I am not the only one, there are others. And he kind of, uh, the glow begins to build again from inside him and he starts to look a lot more like himself and he looks like he's taking on a little more strength. And he says, uh, I feared he would take you too. And How I do we stop him? You are the only one. All of you must be the ones to stop him. I do not know how, but I assume you take that tall wire and you jam the sharp end into his fucking neck. It's been working so far. He, uh, where do, do you know where we can find him? He says, um, Solomon is a monster, a true monster. He must be stopped, but I do not think he is immortal. He is old. He is very wise, and he will be expecting you of that, I have no doubt. He has been searching for you, but there is no way he can know where you have been. And um, he... Uh, he looks around to each one of you guys around him and says, he settles on you, Carlias, and says, 
truly, my apologies. This form limits my abilities to think clearly, but I believe you saved Raja from crossing over. You're what I... <clears throat> you're what I fought the first time. I believe so. But if you have been returned, then you have a connection to him, to Solomon. And uh, he looks back to you, Raja, and says, he has taken from you some of your life essence, and you too, dwarf. He has taken everything. He says, um, I am not sure what it means in terms of your soul, but you will age faster and you will die younger than your natural cycles. And uh, he says, my life, my children, my grandchildren and my home, all taken. And he puts a hand up towards where you are, Raja, and again, the light around him starts to become quite bright. Um, he says, we must not palaver any longer. You have been part of the sands for too long already. You must return, all of you. You are all that stands between Solomon and a dark age that should never have been allowed to come to bear. Forgive me my sins and avenge our people, Raja. And what of those taken by the sand? Are they lost? That I do not know. Perhaps you can free them as you have freed me. All right. Where should we start to find him? Do you have any, any clues? Where, was he the one you met with those years ago, the last time I saw you? Yes. He pretended to be the mayor. I believe he is the mayor. I believe he has taken many forms over his many years of life. The, ma the, mayor, you the mayor. You mean, you mean the emperor? No. Mayor of the what? Emperor is his own monster. Mayor, mayor, mayor of which town? Of Crimson City. Okay. If he is not there, you will find him at his place of birth, Dread Tusk. If you can call it a birth. He um, looks around to everybody else and says, thank you all for your part you have played and I apologize for the part that I have played. And what of you? Will you be able to return with us? He like looks upwards and, say, and a sort of smile passes across his face and he says, no, I think I am done now. And the light that has been slowly returning him to his form, but also kind of blindingly um, lighting the area, lifts slowly as a sort of blinding flash immediately pierces the blackness above you and a column of light engulfs this ghastly form. And for a brief moment, he retains not just like a youthful vigor, but he looks even younger than when you had known him. And then the light spreads quickly passing over each of you. One by one, you each feel the warmth on your skin, uh, familiar aches and pains over your bodies and the sounds of the desert around you. Um, there's a core of a vulture somewhere above and you are back. You each return to the real world. Ooh. Um, Good job, Lash. You <laughs> barely made it, Lash. I awkward uh, hug uh, Carlias and say, you you pulled me out. And then I, I notice Raja and I run over to Raja and I think I leap up like at <laughs> head and shoulders and just like cling. Okay, well, I was just going to say... <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I was I was just gonna say that Rush is like finally like he's rested the the tip of the tolwar on the ground and he's just kind of blankly staring. So when she does that, it's just <laughs> straight off his feet. And he just gets cleaned out straight off his feet Cartoon onto the clobbered. Just just that that uh that I, I'm that animated like Jeff image of like the the girl that runs up and hugs the other girl, but then the dude like tackles the other guy <laughs> off the screen. Then he just gets completely uh, taken off guard by it. Just, <laughs> oh. Rosa, oh, you're geez. okay, and I'm okay. And... <laughs> I was okay. <laughs> I think you almost killed me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hey, he, just you... kinda, he just kind of looks up at her and says, "Oh." It's... I'm glad you're alive. Um. Uh, well, I just run up to Walter and jump on him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like we were missing out. <laughs> Arden, thanks for uh, getting me up there. No problem. Oh, and then I don't know what's me. going on. What happened? Yeah, what the hell did happen? Did you all have the dream that I had, or like seriously, why were you sad? And Raja, why is this all your fault, probably? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, what dreams did everyone have? Um, there were unicorns, everybody worshipped me as a god. Pretty yeah. normal stuff. Yeah, I had that one. Okay, yeah. so. <laughs> Raja's, just kinda, Raja's just gonna look up at Lash and Seth and say, why do we keep them around? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. But I, I need, he's gonna be like <laughs> he's pushing her back so he can at least sit up. <sighs> and then he gives her a hug. Yeah. That was uh, it's a long story. Yes, so um where did Sagan Shara go? I think he's gone now. Do I have to roll a perception check to see if the town is Oh yeah, is the town there, <laughs> or is it completely leveled? You guys can give me a perception check to uh, see if the town exists. Yes. <laughs> Probably need I to make a constitution it. check as a four hundred pound fear bulk sitting on you. <laughs> <laughs> you get disadvantage on your perception check. <laughs> oh, Arden's not looking around. He doesn't care. Uh, Carlos, we'll get to the reason you don't perceive anything <laughs> you're blind <laughs> and your hat's gone everybody yeah. else you uh you look about um there's some sand there's some dirt um various areas where there is like large rocks and mesas um some red rock boulders there are some driftwood some skeletal looking tree type things maybe a a cactus or a shitty vague plant somewhere there's no sign of a town um nearby um just just a short walk away there's a large um set of rocks and uh like a mountainous terrain it's the red rocks um, it would look a lot like the Grand Canyon, but as if you were at the bottom of it. Um, and uh, behind you is just sand. And on one side of you, there's just a huge amount of, of rocks. It's noon. Um, it's very hot and you can clear, clearly see everything. Um, but there's definitely no signs of, of like life or a town or anything. Carlias, you're probably more concerned with the... Um, extreme heat that you feel against um maybe one of your legs um like like you have a hot coal in your pocket how is this thing no oh. pull it out it's the orb it's boiling to touch um it would feel like touching a boiling kettle or something like just an oh. iron hot hot potato it and then you know just like whip his hat and put it in the hat. Yeah, and as even as you hot potato it, you notice that it's cooling down very quickly. It also has a particular glow to it and a very slight ring. Um, as you bring it out of your pocket, you can hear it as if it's cooling down, um, as, as if it's been active. Um, the glow lessens, <laughs> the 
um, heat dissipates and slowly it returns to its sort of inert state of just being a very clear, almost crystal ball, red in color um, in your hat. Carlos will like, once he can see it's like cold down, he'll take it out and I guess in his mind, he's going to try and just like talk to it. Mm -hmm. Just be like, and so in his mind, he's saying like, what the hell happened there? Why the hell did I see that day again? Uh, well, if it makes you feel any better. No, no one hears this. It's on his head. Oh, okay. Yeah, there is um, no notable response or anything. The orb doesn't do anything. And you don't hear a voice that returns to you. Hmm. I put it back in the pocket. Turns to the group. Well, what's our plan? Uh, uh, figure out where we are and then keep going to Dread Tusk? I think we have very little choice other than to push on to Dread Tusk and finish what we started. You got a few words to say to those, the other group. Not exactly yeah. too happy they left us to die. Everything's gone. It wasn't like they could do a whole lot for us anyway. I'm gonna try and stand up. <laughs> yeah, um, you guys uh, will most certainly retain the damage and things that you uh, took on the what was essentially an astral plane. Um, you spawned in with the same wounds and the same aches and pains. You have the same HP and you have the same amount of spell slots. Um, you were all but fully manifested when that fight began, basically. Uh, Wait, what was that weird healing bullshit like that he did to us then? Did he? He didn't heal. It wasn't a healing. Oh, okay. Light. I thought. I thought he you was, were okay. He was passing off to whatever fucking heaven, and you guys were returning okay. fully to. I thought the, the light shining down and the okay. It was just me being a cinematographer. <laughs> no actual bearing on the. Stats. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you guys are in the same state that you were in just a second ago. Nothing has changed. Gotcha. That was my mentor. He was also the only person who survived the destruction of my hometown at the hands of that same sandstorm that we've been seeing. Of course, all this time I didn't realize he was the one causing the sandstorm. But now we know Solomon was behind it all to begin with. Well, where do we find Solomon? Uh, Sagan Shara just said that Solomon is currently disguising himself as the mayor of the Crimson City. <gasps> if he's the mayor, then the whole city... Not Hold on, you're going to have to explain that one. Emperor, mayor, what the hell? There's, oh, there's, the there's an emperor that rules the entire land, right? But obviously the mayor takes care of the local affairs in the city. I feel like it, I feel like taking over the role of the emperor would be perhaps a little bit too high profile, even for Solomon. That would not be an easy guise to keep up, but the mayor's less important. He could get away with that. So we got to kill both the mayor and the emperor. Great. Well, maybe no, just... No, we may as well cause a civil war in Crimson City. Well, yeah, that's what I was thinking. It could be that the Emperor has very little to do with this all, and he's being manipulated by Solomon the entire time. Perhaps we... Perhaps we're looking at the wrong problem. Maybe ignore the Emperor. You heard the princess. Her dad is a little bit power crazy after the orb. Right, but... Do you suppose that is his own mind that's driving him mad, or do you suppose it's the manipulation of this incredibly powerful demon creature working right next to him? Maybe they're working together. It could be. They might both be in on it. Uh, Roger kind of like looks down at like where the where the city was and is now basically just empty sand. I wonder if all the souls of the people in these cities were lost forever. Are you sure we're, we're even where we left off? 
Uh, can I use my ranger BS that says I can't get lost to figure out if we're in the same spot? If it's terrain I've already covered? Uh, I would say no, because you've just fucking spawned in and you don't have any reference whatsoever, so it's not magical, is it? It's still logical. But you can give me a survival check, or anyone can, to try and sort of determine yeah. where you might be. I was going to say, yeah. can I go for like a five-minute walk and just try and traipse around and... I was going to ask, uh, Carlias, do you have that whistle? You know, for Chambambulus. Pat, my pockets. Uh, oh, yeah, here it is. I think I'll work here. I mean, there's no. Connect. I don't know where here is, but he said he would come. Well, here goes nothing. Well, we don't have eggs. <gasps> but we can get him eggs. Oh, wait, wait. Do I have leftover eggs? Sometime. <laughs> don't I? I doubt it. Oh, wait, they're better if they're rotten. <laughs> <laughs> Did you buy eggs in Thin June just I before? I bought a dozen, but I nice. think I gave him the full dozen. Uh, or did I buy? Did I buy two? No, I mean, it was one dozen. It okay. was one dozen. Yeah, I mentioned buying eggs in Thin Dune, but um, Apocalyptica came along. Yeah, things got out. But of you them. have all yeah. of your stuff. Like nothing mm. got destroyed. Yeah, no, I gave my full dozen to him. So uh, already. So. Okay. Um. You guys take a little moment, um. To try and get your bearings, maybe. Looking around at the area um a little more thin june was not really near any mountains there wasn't a huge mountainous terrain anywhere nearby um perhaps on the clearest day you might see some mountains to the west you are pretty damn close to a set of red rock mountains to the east. Gotcha. And there's no visible train tracks? Because there were train tracks that led into Thin Dune. None. And the fact <sighs> that the tracks are gone is kind of what tells me we're not in the right place. Well, mm -hmm. should I whistle for him or what? Time of day where the sun is. So that's east. If we're seeing mountains to the east, it could be that uh, he dumped us off somewhere near Dread Tusk. Because look, and I'll, I'll point out the mountains east of us. Maybe that is Dread Tusk. Mm. Well, I sure could use some rest, but there's nowhere around here to rest. Well, maybe we could buy Cambambulus eggs once we get there. I'm sure someone in Dread Tusk makes eggs. You want to walk? How far off do these mountains look? A uh, few hours walk. It's not far. We can just walk there, and if this isn't Dread Tusk, then we call him. Carlias starts walking. He's like, well, you owe me a beer. I'm sick and tired of walking. <sighs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, we'll just hoof it uh, to the mountains east of us to see if we can figure out if we're looking at Dread Tusk or not. Just as a double FYI, the cats are alive. And also the other creature you have. What about the speckle rat? Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like, like, this is probably my first time actually going through the bag. What's yeah, the fucking, fucking scene in there? Because <laughs> there's a cat and a speckle rat and, a, or a speckle rat and like three weeks worth of rations. So... Um, <laughs> what's going on? There's no rations. <laughs> oh, Fat-looking speckle rat. <laughs> Which ah! smiles and gurgles at you. In oh a my! Gonna... Um, He's mine, guys. <laughs> cat jumps out. I'm just. It is okay. It's still alive. And... Yeah. Okay, Roscoe's. Um, I have this. Why the hell do we? Have... Oh my! He's kind of sparkly and shiny and rainbowy, and I. You just. Uh, my face is just. <laughs> Two cats. One of those glowy blobs. And a. It might have eaten all of our rations. But look how cute he is! Yet again, steam is now pouring out of Carlisle. <laughs> Listen, I don't know how it got in there, okay? Well, if you don't want it, I'll take him. Raja? Yeah, okay. All right. <gasps> what is it? I'm just gonna... I'm gonna need a hundred beers. I grab him. Start petting him. 
a hundred beers. <laughs> if we okay. live through this, my friend, I'll get you all the beers in the world. Just want to clarify. All of the rations, because I had 135 rations. Ooh. How long were we gone for? Well, I rolled uh, D20 to just decide okay. a, roughly right. how many Fuck. were eaten. Oh and I rolled a one, which I basically rolled for you. Yep. Yeah. So okay. they're all eaten. The speckle rat is twice its size and perfectly <laughs> And Choice is happy. <laughs> and <laughs> super happy. <laughs> oh, man. But at this point, you're not desperate for rations in the sense that you have this fuck off great mission mm. in the three hours away. Well, um, enjoy the blob. He's I not think. a blob. He's adorable. It's not a rat, despite what they call them. Yeah. Yeah, he's not a rat. Dad. Look how happy he is. It's a rat full of a couple weeks of food. <clears throat> Wonder if he likes diamonds. I think Carlisle's heart just stopped. <laughs> after after yeah, hearing like, him say, I'm I wonder if he like, eats diamonds. He's like, gonna need some CPR. <laughs> I'm like putting, hiding things, hiding the diamonds he gave me. <laughs> um. The uh, so you guys head off, yeah. You're heading, you're just all wandering off towards these mountains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, I won't give you any like crazy checks because you know where you're going. Um, and you have still got water and stuff, so give me uh, perception checks and con checks, okay. God, I should have. Right, I'm gonna just remember what you got, and I'll call out all. Of, call out your perception mm -hmm. checks. Um, six. Twenty-three. Fifteen. One. <laughs> one. Yeah, That's natural one. That's so seven. Okay, and then call out your con checks. Five. Twenty-two. It's a check. Can she not a save? If you have a. Oh, never mind. I wouldn't. No difference. Yeah. yeah. Nope. <laughs> Three. I did it backwards. Uh, twenty. Nine. Twenty nine. Okay. Um, blap blap. Let's see here. Okay. 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 So, uh, you guys start heading out towards where the um the mountains are. Um. Your general, damn, you look beautiful today. Arden looks fucking great. He spends the whole time walking along with his face in a mirror, which dramatically brings down your scouting <laughs> average. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, hang on, who got below a five con? Uh, uh, Arden. Me, me, me. Five, I got five a five. I did. But you got five and below. Or, no, I'm sorry, I got a nine. You got a nine? Uh, all right. So you two have a point of exhaustion. Um, the walk, the the summoning sickness, the being brought back to this plane, the fact that you were involved in a combat previously, the pure stress on the body, and then walking for about three hours in the midday heat um, gives you that heat stroke. Um, Contact yeah. failure that we did before. Um, so you have disadvantage on checks. Arden is looking in a mirror, but everyone else sees. No, nope, Walter doesn't. Walter and Arden feel like shit and start lagging behind. Oh, you know what? You know what? I'll give you first. Uh oh. Of course. On your uh, journey, you find. A piece of uh, some sort of constructed thing, a monument, a monolith. The very top of a stone obelisk, which is partly buried in the sand. Um, and it stands out to everyone apart from Arden 
and Walter, who probably just walk past it, whereas everybody else notices this thing, which is maybe only um, five by five with a point at the top. Um, kind of like, what's that Was Washington Monument kind of looking shape? Mm -hmm. um, as if the top of that, but, but much smaller, was sticking out of the ground. Um, it has um, chiseled text all around it, very small, perfectly written. Um, in constant. Um... Does anybody stop at that, or we don't? We all just walk by. All three. You you don't see it, and uh, Walter doesn't see it, but the rest of y'all do. I would definitely go up and check it out. Walter, <clears throat> Arden. Oh, <laughs> like smack, Arden. Put the mirror away. Oh, uh, okay. You too blind as a rat. No, he just he's so shiny today. It's mm, like the like sand right. polished him. Mm -hmm. Wow, he does. I think we have really slightly crazy. more important things to. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna. How how do you, you just stand there and look pretty, Arden? Everyone were you not just okay. were you not just dematerialized? The sand. Like less than an hour ago. Yeah, and I'm actually like mostly dead right now. Yeah, see, look right under the, the on the back. Yeah, these are huge wounds that I just haven't done anything about them yet. Probably we should, should probably well here <laughs> I'll, I'll cast cure wounds at level two on him return i mean i can the, do it too i just i'll return you know, the favor after this uh, is more important return the favor after an entire campaign's worth of him healing us <laughs> i haven't healed anybody i don't think except for that fight <laughs> oh have you <laughs> probably not a couple times um i'm gonna press a digitation just like a foot away so they have oh, extra well. space You're gonna press the digitation mark, sorry? Uh, just <laughs> some of the sand around the base of the, or not the base, but you know, they're coming out of the uh, the sand there just to push it away so they can see more text. Um, on the, on the- On the obelisk, oh, yeah. Nice. They've, they called they called us over, right? So if I, if I notice it upon coming up, I'm gonna clear away a bit of the sand and see if we can read it. Drop some yeah. too. Um, the yeah, text on it is, uh, pretty simple and it is in um what appears to be every language line after line after line hmm. is a different language um anybody who reads two languages uh will notice that it's the same line repeating hmm. um and that the um that some of the text on it is in a language that either you don't understand or is so old that it is not even in use anymore. Um, the text says, Dread Tusk, before you the monument, beware the primal. Yeah, I'm just going to read this out loud. Is, it, is that it? Yes. Yeah, it says that, and then... It's here in Elvish. It's there in Deep Speech. It's there in Common. Dorvan. Hmm. It's written even in Druidic. And Auron. Beware the Primal. There's a couple of thieves symbols over here as well. What primal? Um, <laughs> I can't remember who said it now because it's been too long in the campaign, but someone, someone said uh, Solomon was a Primal. It was the princess, yeah. Oh, yeah, the princess. Okay. So, uh, Roger will say, did we not hear that Solomon was the primal? Oh, no. Or he was a primal, like it's a species, a race of ancient beings. Wait, there's more of him? There could be more than one, yes. You just hear Carlisle spin his gun. I guess that means there's more to kill. So, I mean, it means we're on the right track. Well, he, Second Shard did say that this was the birthplace of Solomon. I wonder if it's the birthplace of others as well. Or maybe this obelisk is referring to Solomon specifically. Isn't this the place we got to destroy the orb? It, is this Tread Tusk? <laughs> Do we see it anything says... besides the obelisk? Uh, no. It says Tread Tusk. You are, like, right you're here. about to head into. Um... I don't know what it would be like, but like a like a like a 
chasm, but as if you mm. were at the bottom of it, and the, this right. is where the beginning is, and you're going to head into a kind of winding maze of mesas and mountains. It's not really like a typical mountain trail. Um, it's more like you're going to head into a huge opening inside a lot of um, mountainous. Oh, I could climb. I could climb up and take a look around and see if I can spot it in the distance. Um, we should leave something here to to mark our passing. You really want any of the canyon? Yeah. Something like the, the the mountain. So if we get lost, we can come back and find it. Well, how can I get lost? I think it's dangerous to leave any markings. Well, I mean, everyone already knows who we are, where we're going, what we're doing. Yeah, but they no longer know exactly where we are. We got rid of those chalices. I mean, they know where we're going. There's only one place we can go. I mean, we can leave a mark if you really want. I don't see what good it will do. No, it's fine. Just a suggestion. You take your suggestions and you shut up, Walter! Running away, crying. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now look Roscoe what you did. You made him cry. I'm killing Solomon myself. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't really see the benefit. We're not going to get lost. I can easily, like, keep track of where we are based on these mountain ranges. Okay, okay. Besides, if anything, it would just give other people a warning that we're here. Although I do wonder if the princess and her crew made it here yet. We better hurry up and get to Dreadtus then. And if only, if only I had a really quick way to get up there and take a look around. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> How much can I carry when I fly? <laughs> um, well, you're for the, more, for the record, bit. I don't think Raja knows you can fly yet because you yeah, never told him. Does. And yeah. he wasn't in there for that conversation. He's just right. kind of he's just kind of looking up at the top of the mountain range. Give me a second. I'm just gonna run up here and take a look around real quick. And he's gonna like well, start climbing. Wait. What's up? You wanna come? Um. Why don't you just stay here? And I think as I say that, I'll just start up and up and up. And you see my little feathery cloak thing fluttering. What in guys, nation? Guys, what am I looking for? Guys, the cloak I gave her can make her fly. Yeah, it's really cool. You said that guy knew what he was doing. Look at me now. Look at me now. I'm going over to Arden like, <laughs> I don't think it was a cloak. I'm still sleeping. <laughs> this is a dream. Does she have a spell? I don't know. Definitely the cloak. Do you Roger, have spells? Smack me. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Wait, watch this. Huh? <laughs> Roger. <laughs> back ass Miss Hartsy can. Alright, definitely not a dream, Jesus. Do you want another one? Just, uh, he's he backhands him hard <laughs> enough that I probably should make an attack roll. Oh, man. <laughs> He's trying to uh, knock the pity did, did off. Walter say, do you want another one? Yeah. <laughs> Carlisle's backhands, Walter. Oh, oh my man, God. I'm, I'm way the fuck away. We're, I'm like 10 I'm feet away. I can with fly now. How, what, how long have you... I point to the, uh, the little cape thing. Just when I got that. Huh. Same day. Hey, um, well, I don't see. Oh, and check. what do I see? <laughs> perceive, my child. Perceive with the power of dice. Um, yeah, it's a. It, it is like looking from a relative bird's eye view area into a set of canyons. Um, if you follow the canyon that you're at the mm -hmm. widest one from looking down from where you are there's a various different entrance ways and it does look a little like a maze um you can see that just by entering this canyon and heading a little ways in there is a very old ruined looking structure a little further ahead um well, if absolutely we... you're on the right path and this looks like it looks like an ancient temple or something if we keep going east it looks like there's kind of like a little labyrinth and then wow yeah there's there's some ruins i think we're on the right track can you even hear me from up here 
Are you like full I'll on come 60 down. feet up? Huh? Can can she go 60 feet up? That's just regular I know. supply spell. Probably pretty high, right? Oh, yeah. I guess you only just... know how fast I can go. So I wonder if we, there's. Yeah, any... yeah, yeah, we know she can fly 50 feet in roughly six seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if she flies straight up for 30 seconds, she yeah. could get a few hundred feet up in the air at least. She can fly like so. Months. Yeah, it's I could probably cold. message her then and go, what do you see? Well, uh, pretty far. <laughs> it's <laughs> just like a voice from the clouds now. Um, <laughs> well, there's there's like a labyrinth and some ruins, and this is the right way. <laughs> yeah, so we're we're here. She says. Okay. <laughs> Lash, give me another perception check. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the area is. Uh, around now that you're up so high, you're aware that there are wyverns up here just f lazily flying around the area. Hey guys, I'm gonna come down now. Um, yeah, I'm coming down now and I'm gonna go down as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> How many roughly did I see? Uh, you saw about six. Um, and they incredibly did not see you. Oh my god. Imagine Guys? if she aggroed all six. That'd be a hilarious oh. way to end the campaign. Oh <laughs> I don't know, man. That'd be easy. We can get two fireballs in while they're coming down. Hey guys, um, we're definitely on the right track. The other thing is that there are a bunch of wyverns up there. There's a bunch of they're what? They're just flying around. Is there a wonder? Baby dra little tiny Where's... small dragon things, wyverns. Roger, smack me again. Are you sure? Are you gonna do this one? I'm I'm definitely definitely like last time I smacked you really hard. <laughs> I'm definitely dreaming. What the hell? Do you want something a little more potent? I've got like huh? like a lightning bolt between two of my fingers. <laughs> yeah. I, I've already. No, just Raja, just do it. Hey I... Raja, wait. You still have that chazzy, right? I I hit him do. with the chazzy. I, I don't think that's a good um, idea. I mean, <laughs> look at him. He needs something. Wait, you guys have drugs? I, I'm just going to smack you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jazzy, hold on. You still have some of that? Wait. I, what? yeah, I, Raja, you're we've had it for this. In, huh? no, it's not what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what it sounds like. Someone gave this to us back at the start of our mm -hmm. journey, and I've just never, I mean, all right, I've give me. Never used it. Just give didn't me. care. Give me a what? dose. I'm no, no. <laughs> this stuff is not Give healthy. Give me a dose and smack me. It's not. <laughs> uh, if you're sure, you can always right. put it on your hand and then smack him with it. You you do know how to Shazzy. use this, right? Have you done this before? I'll sprinkle. Uh, I'll sprinkle one pinch of it into his hand. You're actually going to take some chassis right now. <clears throat> Have you, that is pinnacle. That's now, not as, wrong. as I'm illegal. giving it to him, I'm gonna say, uh, you have have you done this before? You already know what effect it's gonna have on your body. Nope. No. Yeah. Perhaps you should. Did you eat it? You don't eat it. You no. It, I up the nose. Oh, okay. I thought you injected it. Into <laughs> I, your th eyes. I thought you did. I thought you know you that, Arden. You're a cleric. Roll me what? a d20. Don't you inject oh. a lot of things into your eyes? No. What? Oh. No. No. Oof. Yeah, fake eye. Um, I feel yeah. like as the moment he hits his face, like his nose with it, all of a sudden, Raja. Roll me a D100. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. As he's inhaling it, just smack him. So it's, <laughs> it's snorted up all the way. Yeah, you just feel fucking buzzed. You feel like you've had like 16 Red Bulls. Uh, uh, but you don't feel like he's dying. Uh, Right, right, right. We gotta just start like curing him now. <laughs> Does that counteract his point yeah, of exhaustion? Not. He feels better. Uh, I didn't think he had exhaustion, did he? No, I didn't. It's about uh, to have like no, five points exhaustion. of exhaustion after this. this. <laughs> uh, you, get, you get no, you get no bad effects, but you also don't get any of the good effects from Chazzy. You just feel fucking like woo, fucking great. But let's go. Raja, Raja's let's go. like carefully tying the back back up. Let's go that's, kill a primal. I got this. Be careful, that's... Carlisle, you should. Did, shouldn't you lay down? Running. Water. Running. 
running all the way. Is he still in range of me? <laughs> He's just running. I He's okay. Uh, follow him. <laughs> I, sh- I showed um, him the way. He's gone. All right, fuck him. I'm gonna cast haste on him to see what fucking happens. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. Just like dividing just by see, zero. See if he's going off, like go kill a primal. All right, fuck it, and just cast a haste on him and see what happens. So my speed is twenty-five. Like, do I just bolt off like Sonic? Just... <laughs> I think you need to give me a Constitution. <laughs> <and save> yeah. <laughs> see what you need to beat. Fuck me. Okay, just about makes it, breaks it. You, uh, your heart starts. <laughs> You start to like fucking palpitate and sweat. Your body goes into like a fight or flight. You're probably basically having a panic attack while you're running. You've got so much adrenaline going through your body. You just start fucking running. But basically, he just runs really fucking fast. Now, all you did was he started running at his full speed and then he's just started running really fast. He just kicks up some dust behind him. Dust and he's yeah. gone. Raja, oh, Raja chases him for like three seconds until the haste spell takes effect, and then, and then, like at that point, he's just taking off, and Raja can't keep up with him anymore. And he's just, yeah. "What did you?" <laughs> he I like just... turns, he turns back and looks at Walter. Did you just haste him? Yeah, I was hoping he would hit a wall. How long does haste last for? Um, a minute. A minute. Yeah, it's a one. Minute. A minute, and then you take like a exhaustion combat thing. But wow, well, let's hope that you don't need those spell slots, huh? Okay. <laughs> no, I'm as I'm as I'm doing this, I'm turning a couple sork points into uh, some level three spells. Well, let's hope you don't need those sork points. <laughs> okay. You, let's, you uh, and I your mean, you and your infinite sorcery points. I know. I can just fucking. It's great. It's like some weird Doctor Strange shit. I just keep going into it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, out of out of just curiosity, I was like, should Arden try it too? Because now I'm very curious. But like, this is why I'm, I'm gonna roll real quick. I guarantee it wouldn't be a good idea. Yeah, no. Uh, that's what I. That's what I thought. Cool. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, the cleric survived 37 episodes and it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll I'll turn to Lash instead and say, I can you keep an eye on him? I don't think the rest of us can keep up with him. Wow, yeah, I better, and I up and just kind of after him. Yeah, you fly off around the corner. Gosh, he's fast now. Yeah, imagine a haste. (laughs) No, you keep no, you keep giving me that good stuff in the next fight we're in. That's Uh, we're gonna have to. How you feeling down there, Carlias? Moving kind of fast. I'm really good. I'm really good. He's doing fine, guys. Just hur- hurry up. Okay, we gotta he's go. Really moving here. Anybody got any water? Probably gonna need some some water. But you always look at me when you ask that. <laughs> <laughs> I am staring daggers at Arden now. <laughs> so, you guys run around the corner. More like a casual jog. You guys casual jog around the corner. Yeah, he's just like, we'll catch up with Carlisle. See you eventually when we do catch up. Oh, yeah, I have a trail of steam following, by the way. Yeah. Eventually, you uh, you turn around one particular Mesa, Butte, in this canyon. Um, and I guess the three of you that were following will see uh, Carlisle maybe with his hands on his knees, taking in a few gulps of air. Um, Lash maybe landed. Um, and in front of you stands a very impressive structure, sort of half carved into a ridge of this canyon. Um, a massive, powerful looking and very old looking sort of sandstone, maybe temple. It's the Temple of Dread Tusk. It looks a little something like this, um, which is an awesome image. Thank you very much, Anna the New. Um, wow. As you guys head around the corner, you see this thing in front of you. And this is a huge monolith um, of, a, of a temple, but it is very old and very ruined. And it looks like it carves into the, um, the sandstone and then heads downwards um, underground. Um, there's like nothing around it particularly um, of note. Um, no Can we take there. an extra second to appreciate how pretty awesome this drawing is? Yeah, oh my yeah. god. Little Carlias over there. fucking cool, man. That's this insane. Is, uh, the dopest image of all time. 
Yeah. Can I, can I get that as a wallpaper? <laughs> There's like some <laughs> photo realism yeah. going on there. They too. even added, they even have like both the Tolvar and the Halberd, yeah. even though I yeah. don't oh, yeah. technically Do have the Halberd anymore, but it's in there. It's, it's in cool. The, That's amazing. Um, yeah, the, the few of you have now made it to Dread Tusk and uh, from one side of you, from a little opening in a cave, um, a voice speaks, the quite an old sounding voice that says, uh, I, I told you they'd be here. I am a divination wizard after all. And you turn and see two very elderly figures, one man and one woman, gray hair, dressed all in black, and they look oddly familiar. The man smiles warmly at you and waves as they begin to approach over towards you. The woman holds a staff in her hand, but holds the other uh, hand up to her mouth and gasps and says, oh, Leon, they haven't aged a day. And that's where we end today's session. What? Oh my. What? And on top of that, you're level eight. Congratulations. Oh. Fuck you, Brad. God damn it. Oh, Fuck it's time it. to go see how to make a character even more broken. 50 years <laughs> into the fucking future. We rolling anything this week or are we doing it next week? We'll do it next week, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, we'll do all that stuff next week. I don't get any uh, cool bullshit. I forgot. Level Ooh. eight. If level eight, you get a feat, man. Nah, or if you want it for stats. Multi class. I'm level seven. Level oh, yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I got my fourth first or first fourth level spell though. If you're going, are you going more cool. warlock? No, or you no, it just be sorcerer. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, everybody. Nice. That was good, man. That was an awesome episode. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting episode. I'm also, still staring. Also, at that I've one. been holding on to this image for two weeks. Yeah, this is oh my god! The fucking best picture ever. It's it so is. good. It was by Anna the Newt. Uh, I think you can find her in places. She has like a Tumblr and stuff where you can go and look at stuff. She does a lot of stuff for us as well. Um, it's paid work before you just cats in there. Yeah. But she does a lot of the maps and things as well. She's done half of the maps for not just this show but some of the other shows on Table Story as well. But this in particular is like. <gasps> yeah, that's the next level. Awesome. Mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Um, welcome to Dread Tusk, the beginning of the end. Um, and we'll deal with all of the level up shit and all the extra shit that comes with uh, Dread Tusk and this, yes, time jump. It's the future, boys. They're quite old looking as well. Mm. How long will we get? Mm. Um, so Sweet. let's do a quick round of shout outs. And then uh, next time we'll cover all the other bits and bobs. Um, let's start with my boy. Let's start with the man who I needed for two weeks. Otherwise, I couldn't proceed. Fairlight like Excalibur. Do you understand why I needed you for these last two episodes? <laughs> yeah, I, I had a feeling it was going to be something like that. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm 81 Damage. Uh, you can find me uh, live pretty much every single day uh, at twitch.tv slash fairlight underscore Excalibur. And lately, I'm, I don't know, I've been on a Warhammer kick for the last couple of weeks, but I don't know, kind of fiending for something new already. It's so hard to find a new game to like really get into for weeks on end, you know? <clears throat> uh, Tarkov. My, my stress of life, that. Bad. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm live pretty much every single day doing uh, shenanigans and nonsense over there. And that's about it. All right. Uh, Mr. H. J. Tenchi, how about you? Hello. Uh, 1 to 9 p.m. PST, Monday through Saturday. Um, I will be gone uh, next month, 11th through the 18th at E3. So I don't know if that's going to throw a monkey wrench in anything. Um, when? Next 11th week. through 18th. So Monday to Monday. That's like mm -hmm. three weeks from so now. So second, yeah, second week of uh, next month. So we uh, have we'll like, do, we'll do I'll prepare something yeah. Yeah. or something. Uh, I was, I was going to say before and then I completely forgot. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're playing Chrono Trigger. So that's cool. Chrono Trigger. If you enjoy Dust Valley, you'll probably like Chrono Trigger because it's basically a Final Fantasy game with time travel, which is now what Dust Veil is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Connor Cronus. Where can people find you? Speaking of Chrono and everything. 
uh twitch.tv forward slash connor cronus uh currently playing through fallout 4 on very hard uh but as well i'm slowly introducing conan rp to uh the streams as well because i'm very much addicted to it mm. especially yes. with those potions of endowment <laughs> yes go and see connor's character's giant dick on uh connor's <laughs> Uh, <laughs> just wait for uh, the RP the, the emails that you can do make it a hundred times better if you want to see Connor's dick then head on over to Chatterbate um, where he masturbates on camera for everybody why do you think I really bought you that webcam Connor I needed my night <laughs> chatterbate.com forward slash Connor Cronus I'll pay you back in bits <laughs> uh, Ms. Tuesday Gray Hi guys, I am in fact Tuesday Gray and I am a Tarkov addict, um, but I don't need or want any help and I will be casting again later this summer, so follow oh, me yes. if you like. You return soon enough. I return. The flying halfling returns. <laughs> um, Mr. J. Brotate. Um... Mate. I do have an announcement real quick. Well, not an announcement, but uh, for those of you guys that are looking forward to Elios, we're hoping to bring it back in June. Um, June's looking good, thankfully. So Bringing Elios back in well, June? Well, not Elios, sorry. The continuation of Elios and, mm. uh, and our new show. Sorry, Brad. Jesus Christ. That's all right. Um, oh, uh, actually, me and Zot have been uh, talking. Oh, no. Well, you're right. I'm not going to talk about you're it. You're not though. allowed to talk. Sorry. I'm not going to talk about it. No table talk. I know. I want to. I want to announce table. my thing as well, which I think I've settled on, but I'm not going to do it yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, June, guys. June. June, everybody. The um, month of dreams. Make sure to join the Table Story Discord and post your uh, guesses as to what you think our characters are going to do. Yeah. Get, head into the. I mean, I guess that's what Super Secret Thingy Two is, isn't it? You just announced. No. That's I don't even know what Super Secret Thingy 2 is. That's not what Super Secret really, Thingy 2 is. Really, we need Super Secret Thingy 1, which I think is that, Super Secret Thingy 2, and then Super Secret Thingy 3. They're but Discord we channels for those of you that don't get it. If you don't understand what's going on, then head over to the Discord, because there's mm. just, we just yeah. when there's a new show coming, we call it Super Secret Thingy, and then people can go in there and just speculate as to what it is. Everyone thinks it's Fractured Worlds 3. <laughs> it's not. Um, <laughs> somebody, somebody the other day, like matter of factly, was like, "Can't wait for the Fractured Worlds crew to I come to Table wait Story." For Fractured Worlds three, like, no, <laughs> no. Um, but I did. Uh, it's because I mentioned elsewhere that I was going to try and do a spiritual successor to it and try and get as many mm. of that crew back into the next show that I run. Um, but that's it. That's all I said, and and then mm. they were like, "That's what this is," because uh, the internet. Um, Dust Veil vale two. Um, while Dust Veil vale one is happening. Play Wild through up, the start. aftermath of your inaction or action. Yeah. No, I, I will not run a new thing until this one is done. And then I'll probably need a little time to make a new one. And then I'll run a new thing. Mm -hmm. So you got a while on Super Secret Thingy 3. But Super Secret Thingy 1 and 2 will be showing up where? Twitch.com forward slash table story, which is where all of the other shows are taking Dot place. TV. Dot com. Uh, Dot TV. Com. What it'll did be, I say? It'll TV. be just Bill. Dust Veil 2 that takes place 10 years in the future and all of our characters are level 15 now and we just <laughs> fight demons and dragons every yeah. episode. Okay. Uh, maybe, in, maybe in the planned epilogue episodes if you can get your characters to the epilogue at least. Um, or depending on the various things that I have planned. I'm not even going to think about it too much because my brain will fry. I have, um, I plan to do maybe some um, dungeon building because I haven't fully made Dread Tusk properly yet, and I was interested in maybe doing that on Table Story. So if you're interested in me finally doing some DM streams, which I never do on my channel, I thought it might be fun to do some on the Table Story Twitch channel. So if you want to see some of that, I might just sit and just do some like listen to some music and just roll twenty building um, of a dungeon um, and chat D and D and Dust Valley things. If you want to come and see that, I'm planning on doing it maybe next Tuesday. So we'll see how that falls, but hopefully I'll be doing some stuff like that. Um, and also all of our other shows, again, have moved to twitch.tv forward slash table. So I'm very tired. Um, and this one won't, although I'll probably run those epilogues over there, but we'll get to that one day. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. The crew is back via Plot Armor and Deus Forever. Ex Machina. <laughs> <laughs> um, because we're at the end, and that's when 
it stops being your game and starts being motherfucking mine. Yeah. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> um, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you have fun, and we'll see you next week for more Dust Valley. Dust Valley. Bye. 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 Bye.